na kung sa itong i-discuss. Alright. So for today, uh, we're going to proceed now to the next uh, body fluid. Alright? And which is, I think, ang favorite sa lahat. Tsaka lang. <laughs> Taka lang. Na-share, dears. Or parang parang pangit. Wait lang ha. Let me reshare again. Wait. Okay. <clears throat> All right, ayan, sige. Okay, so again, this is your seminal fluid analysis or your semen analysis, which I think is your favorite <laughs> body fluid <laughs> so far. Uh, before I start the ideas, katong sa CSF, um, nakamensyo mong gugugapon, for WBC count, diba, itong formula for CSF is still katong manual WBC count, diba? The number of cells counted times dilution factor over area times depth. But take note, na mention mo guna ko na, imo siya i-multiply yung 1,000. You don't need to multiply by 1,000 the ideas, okay? Because the overall formula, kato siya na formula, ang kagawsanan ato niya kay uh, microliter. So ako na lang i-write para mas sure. Okay, sure kung nakamention ko gahapon yun. So pasensya. I was thinking na semen to siya. <laughs> All right. So again, di ba, ang formula na to for normal cell count yun, manual is the number of cells counted uh, times dilution factor or the dilution uh, over area times depth. So kato sa CSF, dears, you don't need to multiply it by 1,000. Nakamention mag ko na i-multiply 1,000. So dili na kailangan because ang answer ani is uh, cells per UL na or microliter. Okay? So you don't need to multiply by 1,000 na. But later when we go to sperm, kailangan siya multiply by 1,000. Alright? So ako na siyang i-clarify kay basin makalibog. No? Alright. So again, this is your semen analysis. <laughs> Dear Sasen, I'll try my best to be wholesome, ha? Okay? <laughs> because alam nyo na, your teacher is very makalat, pero will, ano, will do it in a wholesome way and discussion. Of course, mag-interject siya, mataginagmay lang ng mga green jokes, <laughs> if, if gamay na bag yun. But, <laughs> again, we'll do our best to be wholesome. Alright, so again, this is your seminal fluid um, analysis. Alright, now your semen, why do we perform uh, seminal fluid analysis? Okay, of course, the main reason is for infertility purposes or fertility testing, alright? Because again, um, uh, there are couples who would want to conceive a child, pero dili nila kaya mo conceive a child. So there could be a problem with the man or possible po na problem sa females. But again, generally, the main purpose why we analyze your semen is, of course, for fertility testing. And the most common cause of fertility uh, infertility in men is, of course, your varicocele or varicocele. So there is a varicose vein sa muhang scroto, all right? Sa mga boys dyan, okay? So... I, I analyze na dears ha examine na your specimen down under kung may mga veins ba dyan na nagpropotrude okay now what is varicocele again it's the hardening of the veins that that drain the testes and it causes the blood from the adrenal vein to flow into the spermatic vein so there is blood flow dito ni enlarge mo ang vein ni harden alright um, which can elevate the temperature okay in the scrotum which would lead to um, in, in conducive or dili na nun siya chada uh, conducive for um, sperm formation. All right. Now, for varicocele or fertility testing, it's recommended that two or three samples are collected, not less than seven days and not more than three weeks apart. And if two samples are abnormal, then that is considered to be significant. All right. So again, pilaka samples, two to three samples collected, not less than seven days and not more than three weeks apart. So for fertility testing. So we have to make sure na daghang samples para gyud uh, ma-determine na to. No? Uh, daghang tang ma-detect or ma-detect yun na to unsay problema. All right. Okay. Because possible na if ang abnormality ani na first specimen, kay example, sperm concentration lang, per pagka second kay dili di ay lahi na po. So we have to make sure na daghang samples para para good, makuha na to kung sa'yo problema. Alright? Next, of course, um, assessing the successfulness, chak, chak to ba? Accessing the eff effectiveness of vasectomy. Alright? And vasectomy is, of course, one of the ways of birth control. Alright? Um, so, vasectomy, we have to assess um, if successful bang vasectomy. So, vasectomy is, again, the cutting, no? Surgical removal of all or part of the vas deferens. For the purpose, again, of male sterilization. Sterile na yun, meaning wala na uh, sperm or dili na siya kapaburos o uh, female. Alright? As it should. Okay? And the only concern at all ang taong na good is na by sperm or wala. Alright? Because the presence of even one motile sperm in your vasectomy indicates 
uh, unsuccessful na vasectomy. All right? And lastly, of course, for um, cases of alleged rape. Okay, so mga sexual abuses, of course, for legal cases. All right, so that's one of that's these are the reasons uh, why we examine seminal fluid. And as I've mentioned, there's common good ng mga forensic analysis pod, uh, based on experience, no, and it's very sad, no. So uh, when you receive samples for that, then have an open mind ng good. All right, so respect and do not judge. Okay, all right, sige. So here are some pictures, of course, you're familiar na. <laughs> Ayan. So this is your uh, varicocele. Ayan. So as you can see, diba, boys, alam nyo na yan, ato mga brad, mga bros dyan, alright, mga orbs. Um, the testes are, again, are not even, okay? Uh, the the right is higher than the left, okay? And so my purpose, of course, para di sila magbangga, okay? Especially if we're walking, if we're moving, so para di sila magbangga. So at least one of them is higher than the other. And then, of course, you have here the vasectomy. As you can see, the vas deferens is removed. Okay, that's a part or that's a method of birth control. All right? So, di ba? For birth control, we're always talking about females taking the birth control. All right? Bakit, bakit hindi males? Dapat males because your vasectomy can also be reversed. The vasovasectomy or vasovasos, vasovasectomy. Yeah. Pero siyang ma-reverse. Okay? So, ano masiging females ra? Dapat males po. All right? So, males... Mga orbs dyan, if dili mo ganahang magpa, makapaburos, pero you're very taasin mong libido, okay? or sige kang ganahang, sige kang in heat, okay? sige kang H-word, okay? then have a vasectomy. Okay? Uh, you're doing yourself a favor and a lot of the females there na imuhang uh, pwedeng maburos. Okay, sige, kay tungod kay H-word ka, sige. All right? So, dapat dili na sige females ang nasa burden on birth control. Dapat males po. Okay? So, you have to ano that. Okay? All right. So, I'm talking about mga heterosexual ha. Okay? All right. Sige. Pasensya. But for the, for mga kapatid natin, let's be safe lang. Okay? <laughs> Kahit walang basekto. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, sige. All right. <laughs> Ayan. Sige. Oh, na si Sir Mark. Chara, chaka na. Okay, now that's for uh, your initial ano, initial um, discussion, no? About the seminal uh, fluid. Okay? Next, you have of course physiology. So, unsa magyud ning semen di ay no? Unsa magyud ning tool? Uh, semen, okay? <laughs> Sorry. So, the composition of semen as you can see is 60 to 70% seminal fluid. So, it's majority majority good of the fluid is contributed by your seminal vesicle all right and this seminal vesicle again contains fluid that has nutrients all right for sperm and it serves as the fluid transport uh, medium for your sperm okay remember para at least maka propel or para siya maka swim kailangan siya og fluid transport okay so majority of the fluid is contributed again by the seminal vesicles is it raining okay all right oh my god on connection all right <laughs> next it's rich in fructose of course ayan so fructose will serve as the energy source for your sperm okay so it's a ano jud siya distinct siya na cell because diba majority of the cells they like glucose but for sperm gyud kailangan siya og fructose or diba so if ganan mo fresh source of fructose you know where to find it <laughs> not only from fruits but from other sources. Alam yun na. Charot. Okay. Next, of course, uh, your seminal fluid also has this pigment known as flavin. And this flavin gives the normal color of semen na gray appearance. And even flavin also gives the semen its ability to flourish. Ayan na siya, kudiris. Ano ko na, ah, as in? Muflourish da imuhang semen? Yes, and that's because of flavin. Wait, let me check. Ito yung itong color. Uh, I think it's uh, green, fluorescent green, iyahang appearance because of flavin. Okay, wait, let me check. Kaya baka magkamali ako. Nasaan na to? Wait, 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 wait. Nawala siya. Uh, yeah, so flavin can make your sperm flourish. Okay? Alright. Mag flourish di mayo siya, dears. Ganong level. Alright? So, um, again, it can flourish um, fluorescent green, yellow. Wait lang ha. Let me check. A green-white fluorescence. Ayan. Green-white fluorescence under UV light. And sure enough, pag-search na ko na, ah, bitaw, yes. In forensic mga CSI, mga, ina, ano, mga, mga cases, no, uh, they can use fluorescence to detect semen in mga clothes, uh, in mga areas, in the home, or kung asa manggani, using this um, ability of flavin to flourish. So, ilarang pasiganog UV light, mus musiga na siya, alright? Or na ay fluorescence na mahitabo, okay? But again, uh, na yung body fluids po na pwede mo flourish po, such as saliva daw and others. Uh, but again, it can be used, no? So, careful na dyan, mga sa bahay, mga 
kung saan saan niyo nilalagay yung mga ano niyo so careful na baka kung <laughs> ako na pasiga ano UV light ga shine tanan ha <laughs> tanang area sa balay <laughs> so careful na okay <laughs> all right sige so that's for <laughs> your flavin okay so it gives the normal color of your uh, semen all right next you have um your uh, 20 to 30% na prostate fluid. So, of course, this is contributed by the prostate gland. So, it contains um, a milky acidic fluid that contains ACP, which is your acid phosphatase. It also consists of your zinc, citric acid, and of course, other enzymes. Again, for the nutrients, Japon, of uh, your... Um, your sperm. And these enzymes are needed also for liquefaction and coagulation of your uh, semen. Okay. Now, 5% uh, is from bulbo-urethral gland. Uh, it secretes an alkaline mucus, thick alkaline mucus to neutralize the acidity from the prostate gland and the acidity also of the vagina. All right? Pag deposition, of course, the vagina is acidic, normally acidic. And if dili neutralize ang acidity or ang pH, all right, pwedeng ma-affected ang <laughs> pwedeng ma-affected ma imuhang sperm motility or pwede po ma-affected ang sperm. Alright? So, um, in a way, siguro, ang purpose of acidity sa prostate fluid is to kill other mga bacteria siguro. And then, in-neutralize na siya sa bulbo urethral gland para again, the pH will be will be balanced, okay, which uh, gives your sperm, again, conducive environment for swimming and for motility and all that. Alright? And among all, or sa composition sa semen, pila ra ang sperm? 5%. O, diba? So, majority of your semen, dears, it's composed of fluid that supports the sperm, okay? Now, 5% lang is spermatozoa, all right? Now, for, for spermatozoa, of course, these are produced by the seminiferous tubules in your testes, all right? So, this is where spermatogenesis or the formation of your uh, spermatozoa happens. And inside the seminiferous tubules, you have the Sertoli cells. And these Sertoli cells will serve as the nurse cells for developing sperm. So, meaning siya ang nag take care. So, nag-produce a nutrients, siya ang nag, uh, everything, nurse cell. All right? And of course, after um, medyo uh, immature sperm na siya, the immature sperm, which is non-motile, okay, will now be deposited to the epididymis. Ah, epididymis, ayan, epididymis, okay? And in the epididymis, diri mahitabo ang sperm maturation and ma-flagellated na imuhang sperm. Okay? So, the sperm um, grows a flagella or a flagellum, and again, that's for um, movement, all right? And the entire process, this spermatogenesis, until the production of your um, your mature sperm, it happens approximately 90 days, no? So three months, imagine, girl, three months ka mag, mag produce of sperm, pero in a day, tara, pila man yung mag-produce, eh, pila man yung mga paggawas, tara, tsaka, <laughs> Oh my gosh, makaluin yung mga testes, dears. Okay, charot, okay. But uh, anyway, that's imagine, no, like that's 30 days. But take note na daghan ka yung cells within your testes, no? So, uh, daghan pong sperm na ma-produce na in a way, maglapaw, mag-overlap, overlap ng 30 days, di ba? So, in a way, in a day, na dyan kayo ma-produce lagi na sperm. Okay, so, you're safe. Charot, charot. Okay, alright. Kaluin yung hang mga, ano ha, yung hang mga down under. Ayaw po pa sobra, dears, ba yan? Pero, as I've, met, as I've heard, no, as I've read, the, the healthy amount na mag-masturbate ka is 21 times in a month. So, ano ko, shocks. Ano man na? 21 times in a month. So, like, three weeks? Like, seven days? Hindi ko kaya. Kapoy. <laughs> but anyway, that's the normal though for a healthy prostate to prevent prostate cancer though in the future. All right? So, that's what they say. Okay? Pero I'm not following that. <laughs> Chaka Okay, all right. Now take note your Leydig cells, all right? Sila ang secrete sa imong testosterone. And your Sertoli cells, all right? They secrete also inhibit <laughs> inhibit which inhibits FSH synthesis. So mark safe ganung lab. <laughs> sir, I can do more than 21. Wow. <laughs> Actually 30 30 30 good sir. Charo, wow, grabe ha. Grabe ang stamina. Charo, chaka lang. Okay, anyway, that's for um, the composition of your semen. All right? Now, take note that sper spermatogenesis, again, is the formation of your spermatozoa. And it happens in your Sertoli cells. All right? And uh, your spermatogenesis, actually, it happens uh, a lot of processes pa jud, no? So, from spermatogenesis, mo divide pa siya, and then mag-meiosis pag yun sila, and then finally, the production of a flagella sa epididymis known as spermiogenesis. So, ito na siyang i-write later. Okay? So, again, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, you're all familiar. Yes. Nakakamiss. Nakakamiss. Charot. Chaka lang. Okay. So, these are, again, the reproductive system of the males. All right? And as you can see, you have here the epididymis, 
it's sa taas dito sa testis. So therefore, pag pag mature or pag immature sa sperm, diretso niya hatag sa epididymis. And dito siya mature. And then during ejaculation, of course, from the epididymis, of course, muagi siya sa vas deferens, agi siya sa seminal vesicle and the prostate, okay? <clears throat> and then of course, there is a bulbo urethral gland more secrete pod fluid padulong sa urethra. So for the urethra of males again guys or dears, it's two, no two functions, two in one. It can uh it it use it is used as a passage for sperm and of course sa ure. Okay, so two in one na siya. All right? Now take note the prostate is medyo under na sa bladder. That's why sometimes if maghubag imuhang prostate especially sa mga old men, di ba? Maglisod na sa ihi. Okay, remember, the bladder passes through or the the opening of the bladder passes to the prostate. That's why ug maglisod na siya pangihi, kailangan nag-catheter. So, kailangan na siyang isulod diretso dito sa bladder kaya nang hubag ang prostate. And majority of the males, usually yun mga 15 and above, uh, magka-problema gito sa prostate. No? So, that's why as early as now, use your prostate well. <laughs> okay. Sige. And as you can see, diba, the prostate is well uh, near the rectum. So, alam nyo na, wink. That's why medyo Ayo, dili na ko mo further kay baka ano, <laughs> baka bastos na. But anyway, dole gyud siya sa rectum. Okay, I'm wink, taking taking notes charo. Okay. You know what I mean. Okay. All right, so again, that's for uh the <laughs> the reproductive system of the meals. All right? Take note, important e- testes, epididymis, you have the vas deferens, prostate gland, the seminal vesicle, and the bulbo urethral gland, okay? And again, these glands produce um produce the um, fluid no needed for your semen. So therefore, ang semen good is majority is fluid. Gamay na good ang sperm, Anna. All right? Okay. Now, here is, I mentioned, dears, uh, the formation of their spermatozoa. So it starts first in the Sertoli cell, uh, spermatogonium. It undergoes division, mitosis, no? Uh, so to primary spermatocyte. And the primary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis, di ba? Remember, basic na to na bio, para mo divide ang mga cells into 23, di ba? Na chromosomes. And therefore, uh, it becomes this spermatids, which are again immature sperm. And um, pagabot ani mo sa epididymis, okay? Uh, to become a spermatozoon para mag- mag-produce og flagella. And the process of producing the flagella is known as spermiogenesis, okay? So spermiogenesis. All right, ako you're right. Okay, spermio. Genesis. All right? Spermiogenesis. Okay. Spermiogenesis. All right? That's the uh, process na magka-flagula yung mga spermatozoa. Okay. All right. For prostate exam. Yes, true. For prostate exam, that is why for prostate exam, um, i-insert ang um, fingers sa doctor uh, diri sa imuhang rectum. Okay? Because again, it you can palpate the the prostate uh, diri sa imuhang rectum. Okay? Yes, for prostate exam and other methods and other purposes. Okay, anyway, <laughs> we go not to your specimen collection. Okay, all right, my God, Mark, I should stop. Okay, all right, so for specimen collection, of course, for specimen collection or semen collection, the most, um, the important thing to remember the years is dapat na abstinence or continence. Dapat na ay um, seizing muna for any sexual activity, mapa masturbation ba na siya, or with someone else. Okay, so open-minded ang tanding tanan. Okay, sana naman. Alright, so the abstinence should be about two to three days, but not greater than seven days. So boys, nakaya lang ba? Okay, during your lab activity. Okay, <laughs> nakaya na ba ang two to three days? Okay, alright. Actually, for me, hakaya rin yun ako na, promise. Medyo ano ako, dears, I'm more of padulong na ko o single blessedness. And, <laughs> and um, feel ako padulong na ko more on chastity na good. I'm practicing my chastity. So, therefore, kaya rin yun ako na. No? <laughs> Pero again, if di kaya bisag two days man lang, minimum of two days, carry na. Okay? So, abstain, abstain lang sa tiis, tiis muna. Alright? Two to three days, but not greater than seven days. Because if too much abstinence would ha- will happen, um, of course, it will uh, affect also your sperm count. Yes. So, kamo sa inyong no, not November. <laughs> Na successful lang ba? Feel ako dili. No, I failed it. Chaka <laughs> chaka lang. Alright, okay. But yeah. So that's it. No. So again, abstinence. Uh, two to three days, but not greater than seven days. Now, number two, of course, we have to collect the entire ejaculate. So from the start, na mugawa siya pa ejaculate until the end. Dapat you don't miss anything. I don't want to miss a thing. Dapat from drop to drop, makuha yun ni mo siya. Alright? What are the methods of collection? You have again masturbation. Of course, that's the most preferred. 
All right. And um, <laughs> you have number two is coitus interruptus. And last is your condom method. All right. So um, masturbation is, of course, the most preferred. Okay. Because again, uh, voluntary mangud siya. So the patient can control. The patient knows how uh, and when uh, mugawas ihang sampo. So therefore, maandam niya if um, ang ihang ang container. All right. And dapat, diba, we have mentioned that tanan sa ejaculate kay makollect. Okay. Because if naima miss, could be maka lead to erroneous results. All right. <laughs> so masturbation, no? Uh, so kailangan din siya shoot, no? I shoot din siya tanan. All right. Okay. Next, we have coitus interruptus. For coitus interruptus, of course, nasa pangalan na. You're having sex with your uh, partner or so kinsa mangani, and then right before mugawas, no, or right before ejaculation, you collect the sample. Okay? You collect the sample, all right? And uh, in a way, you withdraw, no? Withdrawal, all right? So before you, ano, before you, before the males, no? Ang males ma feel mag na nila, of course, <laughs> kung kanus ang mugawas ng sample. So before na mugawas siya, kailangan i-withdraw and then kuwaon. That's coitus interruptus. So nasa pangalan na, sex, coitus, interruptus, imong gi-interrupt. Okay? <laughs> Next, we have the condom method, of course. If dili kaya ang masturbation, dili, dili um, accessible or dili pwede, then you can use a condom. As long as the condom is not the normal condom that you can buy over the counter because these condoms contain spermicides. All right? So mga special condoms such as uh, rubber or silastic or polyurethane na mga condoms. Okay? Pero again, masturbation is the best method. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dinala ko mo, chika. Hugasan. Hugasan. Ano si hugasan? ang ang imuhang organ not necessarily naman because as if if siguro na microbial testing pwedeng hugasan before uh, collecting but generally dili ra kailangan na hugasan gyud siya wala ra man precautions na you have to wash the the organ before um, ejaculation yes so pwede lang dili okay pero to be more safe and hygienic than wash it okay all right Ayan, okay and yes ni mention si Dor- Dorothy yes very um risky imuhang coitus interruptus yes because possibly uh, it's not preferred because again possibly na mawala ang first um ejaculate or first portion of the ejaculate which contains the highest number of sperms pag yun. so it can falsely um decrease your results so it's best to perform masturbation that's the downside of coitus interruptus although nalamian ka pero ay mukhang sample basin malimtan ba murag makot ni the moment na murag shocks kailangan man ko magpa semen analysis pero wala na finish na it's there <laughs> So, ayan, that's the downsides of the coitus interruptus. Another downside is, ikuwa kay jowa. No? <laughs> so, the best method is for masturbation. So, at least ang masturbation, hindi siya discriminatory. It's non-discriminatory, kaya pwede siya for single, pwede po siya sa naiuyap, di ba? So, ato na ito sa masturbation, okay? Imagine ang coitus interruptus, kailangan dyan ka na partner Pero basin, if na kayo, you know, someone na pwedeng masampit, lang, uy, kailangan kung ano, let's go, ganun. So, Ganon, okay? All right. So, basta, generali- generally, dearest, again, the most preferred sample is your, <laughs> the most preferred sample is your um, masturbation. Again, dear, sa open-minded lang ta, dearing rapita. Okay, so, uh, padayon lang ta. All right? Now, for sample container, it should be warm, sterile glass, or plastic container. So, I'm not sure kung sino yung gagamit. Kung sino yung gagamit na tube, dear, sa inyong lab uh, sample, uh, sa inyong procedure. Is it? Glass, gyapon, or kato ng plastic na conical? Glass? Plastic? Ah, okay. All right. Plastic. Conical. Okay. So, that's better. Okay. Kaya na siya cone. So, mas makoncentrate siya dito. So, that's good. All right? So, kato ang muake. Kato pa ang glass, no? It's really challenging bitaw to collect dears. Okay. Now, at times, na murag... Murag dili kaigo. Joke lang. Dili kaigo. Ducks mo niya. Joke lang. Kanang uh, dili siya... Basta? Like, pag-collect na ko ato sa ako experience before, kaya morag, lisuda, good. Kaya morag, siyag, you have to make sure mag-good, diba, to collect everything. So, morag, nine times, morag, basta, I'm not sure, I'm, hindi ko ka-explain, kay morag, I don't know if kasabot ang mga boys puran sa pag-collect, pero, medyo difficult siya, no? Like, kanang, example, sa motif mo, ejaculate na ka, kaya medyo morag, you have to make sure na, nakatapat yun siya, kaya what if, yun na gani. So, basta, I'm, I'm not sure if nakagets mo, pero, I hope nakagets mo, sa ano, yeah, <laughs> Hungarian. <laughs> 
Dili, okay. <laughs> Next, of course, um, for specimens awaiting analysis, no? uh, so for specimens DI, uh, it's recommended that for specimen collection, na I separate private room sa laboratory for collection. But if walay private room, then pwedeng sa balay kwaon as long as it should be delivered to the laboratory within one hour. All right? Within one hour of collection. Because again, pwede na magsugod ang liquefaction aning time ha? and ma-miss na ang time of liquefaction which is necessary for uh, for for processing okay all right now it should be at room temperature ang collection all right uh, take note of the at the time of specimen collection specimen receipt and even liquefaction because that's necessary diba? later when we go to the different characteristics and of course if before analysis na good side beers uh, it should be um kept at 37 degrees celsius so unsa man na siya, of course pwede mo siyang i Paano sa'yong ilok, sa'yong muhang, muhang coli, charot, sa'yong armpit, di ba? If yung na-experience na. Or sa mga gifted natin ng mga females dyan, pwedeng in between the breasts. Okay? So, pwede basta near the body, no? Uh, body temperature. So, pwedeng under the armpit or pwedeng in between the breasts kung gifted atong mga female beshies dyan, atong mga mga zais. Okay? Alright? So, muna siya. Basta near the body temperature. That's, that's how you can maintain 37 degrees Celsius um, before analysis, or if namo incubate, or pwede pwede incubate at 37 degrees Celsius. Alright? Basta, ayaw na kalimti na, <laughs> ayaw na kalimti na, na kay semen na i-process. Okay? Alright. Now, that's why, ano 37 degrees Celsius, because again, that's the optimal temperature for the sperm uh, to live. Okay? That's why the testes also are outside the body, or lower than the body, or outside yun siya. Because again, uh, the temperature, no? Dili kayo siya na naka- Bug now, di po siya na nakainip. Okay? That's conducive for the temperature of, uh, that's conducive for the formation of sperm. Okay? Alright, so that's for collection. Dami natin chika, collection pa lang. Oh my God. Okay, alright, sige. Next, you have here again the containers. Ayan, conical tube. No? Pwedeng conical tube. And these are the condoms. No? Uh, which again, doesn't contain any spermicide. So muna siya, it's for sperm collection. Yun. So elastic or polyurethane na condoms. Okay? And as as you can see, the container, pwede siyang conical or pwede siyang round bottom raja po na tube. Okay? Basta ang purpose, as long as the opening is wide. Okay? Dapat yun wide ang opening. Because of course, to facilitate collection. Okay? All right. Next, we go now to your um, specimen liquefaction. Huh? Oh, specimen liquefaction. Your fresh semen, once it's outside, it coagulates. No? And within 30 to 60 minutes, mo liquefy na siya. Mo na siya into the liquid form. So, I've, I searched the reason. Nga naman mo, mo coagulate mo hang semen pag gawas, no? So, it's because of a substance in semen uh, known as your... Um, asa to? Semodulin. Ayan. Ako inote. So, semodulin. Okay. Uh, semogelin. So this is like a fibrinogen-like precursor. Ayan. Semogelin, it's an enzyme in a way that pag pagawas niya kay mo activate and mo clot imuhang semen. So akong gi-research unsay reason nga mo clot jud. So um it said says there sa mga studies na ano siyang mo clot it's because siguro to prevent uh the semen from uh from kanang from it prevents the semen or it it lets the semen stay inside the opening of the cervix okay para dili siya ma-attack ma okay or dili siya ma ma sana mugawas okay so murag mo purpose daw sa iyang coagulation purposes all right but of course after coagulation the enzymes found in your prostate also will undergo or will um will be activated okay uh, to liquefy the sample because of course, if clotted in muhang semen or coagulated in muhang semen, we cannot examine the semen. All right? Because again, dili uh, makitan kay kumpul kumpul siya. So you need to await liquefaction. And normally, dapat the semen sample liquefies within 30 to 60 minutes after um, collection. And dito pa lang ka mo start sa muhang analysis. Okay? Now, failure of the liquefaction to happen, to happen within 60 minutes, then there could be a problem. No? There could be deficiency in the enzymes in your prostate. Okay? And if after two hours, you do, wala lagi job mo siya ni liquefy, then you may add already mga reagents such as amylase, bromelain, alpha-chymotrypsin, or dulbecos phosphate buffered saline. And the purpose is, of course, to break up the mucus na nag- um, Kumpul -kumpul dito in order to begin your sperm counts. All right? Because again, it uh, your sperm counts or other ex examination of semen will not be performed or cannot be performed if clotted by mohang semen. 
Okay? So, if ever greater than 60 minutes, wala pa juni clot, then, of course, possibly yun na, na problema na si mohang prostate. Okay? And if i-add mo niya siya, dears, kanilang mga reagents, you have to note that in your procedure, or i-mo siya i-note sa mong, sa mong result, that a reagent was added, okay, for the purpose na mo, mo liquefy siya. Kaya wala siya ni clot within two hours. So, that's why it's necessary to note, no, the time of receipt and the time of liquefaction. Because you have to note if pila ba naka minutes siya nag-liquefy after the receipt in the laboratory, okay? Or after receiving in the laboratory, okay? Because again, greater than 60 minutes or greater than 2 hours rather would indicate uh, a problem in the prostate, okay? Now, if incomplete ang collection, what are the effects? Of course, if the first part is missing, there is decreased sperm count. Remember that um, your first part contains the highest uh, amount of sperm. So therefore, if di na siya ma-include sa imong collection, there is a decrease in um, your sperm count. And owing to a reduction in the prostate secretions, okay, kay first part man, wala ni mo nakuha. Alright? So, remember that ang prostate medyo siya na ang last together with bulbo-urethral na mo secrete of fluid. So, di siya makuha, then there will be a falsely increase in the pH, okay, and the coagulum uh, will fail to liquefy because again, walay enzymes from the prostate and appeal, okay? And if the part of the last portion naman is missing, there is a decrease in semen volume. Remember that ang last part, kailangan dyan ma-included tanan, okay? So, ang volume ni mo dili complete. So, therefore, there will be a decrease in volume. Increase ang sperm count because again, remember, ang naara dito, na-concentrate kayo siya sa first part. So, therefore, increase mo hang sperm count, okay? Now, decreased pH uh, because of uh, the seminal vesicles na part, could be na wala or sa bulbo urethral da pit no uh, na fluids wala na pill, which consists of the alkaline uh, mucus and alkaline secretions and lastly specimen will not clot so still the same enzymes that were found in the prostate were not included okay because towards the end of the semen na siya, or towards the end of the portion of the semen makita to mga enzymes na needed for clotting okay so take note of that what are the effects of incomplete collection so as you can see there's from start to end kailangan yung collect Tanan. Okay, so from drop to drop, kailangan yun di mo siya i-collect. Wala ka dapat sasayangin. Okay, kasi pinaghirapan mo yan. <laughs> okay, alright, take note of that. Sir, appeal ba sa... Charat, yun na lang. Sir, appeal ba sa pag-examine if ano? Ayun na lang, bastos. <laughs> Ayun na lang. Okay, alright, sige. Now, we go now to your uh, macroscopic appearance no? or examination of your uh, semen. Now, for the appearance, generally, the normal is gray-white to translucent or some references say it's pearly white or pearl white color all right and the odor is musty or bleach na odor all familiar of course yahang odor kay musty or bleach all right now if there is an increase in white turbidity there could be an infection because increase in wbc's or concentrated jud kay muhang sample red to brown coloration increase in rbc's and the presence of blood take note dears kanang bold na ko na brown um i think tigawas na siya sa boards no brown coloration sa semen it indicates rbc's or blood and yellow coloration prolonged abstinence okay and uh, urine contamination and the presence of some medications. Okay, if prolonged ang abstinence, dear, as you can see, if dugay kayong abstinence, uh, very concentrated, very baga or thick na kayo muhang semen. So it could happen that if increase ang abstinence, um, there could be a uh, decrease in your uh, motility sa muhang sperm. Okay, so dapat yun within 2 to 7 days siya gali muhang abstinence. Okay, if more than that, your semen will be very concentrated. Okay, medyo baga or viscous na yun kay muhang semen. So possible na ang uh, muhang sperm motility pwede ma-affected. Okay, alright. Ayan, sige. Uh. Okay. 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 Okay, sige. <laughs> That's for um, your appearance, okay? Now, of course, if medyo loose pad imuhang semen, dears, okay? Yung loose pad ang semen, of course, it indicates na medyo low imuhang sperm concentration, okay? Um, if um, medyo like whitish na siya, no? Like dili, uh, dili na, or clear na siya, colorless, no? It means there's a decrease in sperm concentration. All right. Now, for volume, uh, normal is again 2 to 5 milliliters. Uh, if increased shine abstinence, pwede siyang mo more than, okay? Kaya depende sa imuhang pag-abstain. If taas gili mo abstinence, then of course, there's an increase in your volume, alright? But again, the advantage, disadvantage is possible ma-affected ang sperm motility, 
uh, kay viscous na kay mohang semen. Okay? Now, it's decreased in infertility and incomplete collection. Alright? And it can indicate improper functioning of one of the semen-producing glands such as prostate, your seminal vesicles, or the bulbo urethral glands. Okay? Decrease man in volume. And remember, that majority of the volume of the semen is contributed by these organs. Okay? Alright? So that's for <laughs> volume. Alright? Now, viscosity, very important. No, It's the consistency of the fluid and may be related to specimen liquefaction. Faction. So the normal deers is it pours in droplets. So how do you measure viscosity? Mugamit kag pasture pipette and then imo siyang i press and then lantawon if mo pour ba siya into droplets. If there are strings or threads na ma-form greater than 2 centimeters, all right? Uh, then that is abnormal. But take note there's sa normal ha. You mentioned sa Brunzel, okay? Brunzel ha. A watery, no? Watery sperm, a uh, watery semen is normal na mo pour into droplets. Muna yung description sa normal semen. Watery that pours into droplets. Okay? But for graphs na textbook, okay, ay yung dimension, abnormal ang watery. So, girl, asa man itong lugar aning dapita? Okay? So, just take note, girls, na mo pour siya into droplets. Okay? So, it pours into discrete no, na droplets. Alright. Okay. Now, increase in viscosity, as I mentioned, decrease in sperm motility. That's why if intense na or dugan yung abstinence, prolonged abstinence, it can increase the viscosity. So, therefore, there may be a decrease in sperm motility and it can impede testing for the other parameters. Concentration, anti-sperm, antibody detection, and the measurement of biochemical markers. Ah uh, yes, for reporting deers, very important deers. Take note of these two. To why is it sa boards? As in, pasalamat yung gayo ko na emphasize good ni Sir Errol uh, sa mga pioneer na review kay as in igawas kita to why sa kung CM. All right, zero watery. All right, kung watery gani ang sample, you grade that as zero. Kung gel like siya, it's four. Okay, so how do we remember zero watery? For gel like, oh, take note of that. Mura siya, imo siyang gaman og beat. Okay? Zero watery, four gel like. Zero watery, four gel like. Zero watery, four gel like. Take note of that. Please, dears, it helped me so much. Good. Okay? And di gini mo siya malimtan. Until now, ma-remember pa na ako. Kay lisod na if ma-interchange ni mo. Usik kayo ang two points. Okay? Zero watery, four gel like. So ako mga AUBF lab students sa una last year na mention ako ni. Zero watery, four gel like. Zero watery, four gel like. Zero watery for gel life. Balik-balik kira, okay? Until mo take note or mo sulod sa imuhang mind. Okay? Alright. Now, other methods, depende sa lab, you can describe it as low, normal, or high. Na yung ba yung ilahang reporting is slightly viscous, viscous, thick, no? Depende lang sa ilahang protocol. But again, you can grade it zero watery for gel like. Okay? <laughs> Zero watery for gel like. Okay? Ayan. That's very important. For pH, dears, the normal pH is 7.2 to 8. That's according to Strasinger. But for Brunzel and for graphs, it's 7.2 to 7.8. Okay? That's for graphs and for Brunzel. 7.2 to 7.8. So, uh, but again, generally, it's alkaline. Okay? It's alkaline. So, therefore, kung increased ang pH, there could be um, indication of infection. And kung decreased ang pH, okay, there could be decreased in uh, increase in prostatic fluid because again the prostatic fluid secretes the um the um, acidic na mga fluids okay or there could be ejaculatory duct obstruction or poorly developed seminal vesicles so ejaculatory duct uh, because possibly na ni accumulate ang prostatic fluid dito so daghang acid and poorly developed seminal vesicles wala mo produce sa alkaline na fluid so therefore wala mo counter attack or counter sa imong pH so that's why it's decreased in pH now for pH sorry na pause ang ano Okay. All right. Now, for pH um, analysis, dears, uh, it should be examined within one hour of collection uh, because um, it will become more acidic because of the production of lactic acid, kung taas mo ang sperm counts, and it will be more alkaline because of the loss of CO2. All right. And um, <clears throat> for measuring pH, you can use the reagent strips uh, for for urine, pwede ra. Um, or if not, you can use a paper, no? Uh, pH paper known as... Um, um, known as your nitrosine paper. Ayan, nitrosine paper. Take note, that's a pH paper, Marsha Glitmos paper, to detect pH. But if you don't have that, pwede ni mong gamitin po ang reagent strip sa nitrosine. Tama? Nitrosine. Ayan. 
nitrosine paper, pwede mo siyang gamiton uh, to check for pH. But if you don't have that, you can perform or you can use the reagent strip for urinalysis. Okay, all right, sige. That's for uh, your pH. And for spec grav, specific gravity, as you can see, normal 1.010 to 1.030. So medyo same, same sa ihi, no? So it gives a presumptive result of your sperm concentration. Of course, if taas ang specific gravity, medyo taas po ng sperm concentration. If gamay ang spec grab, then of course, mas gamay ang imuhang sperm concentration. Alright? So, take note of that. Uh, so, sir, apil bang ba taste? Chara, 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 chara. Sir, uh, apil bang ba taste? No, dili siya apil. <laughs> sir, apil bang ba ano? <laughs> dili ra. So, that's the macroscopic ha? Um, from appearance until specific gravity. Okay? Alright. So, Kaya ba sindi ba na yung mga patients na muinom mo pa yung apple juice, maglaklak mo pa yung apple juice. Charot. Okay. <laughs> Kaya para ano, charot. Alam nyo na yan. For those who know. If you know, you know. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Sige. Now, here are some pictures. This is the normal appearance of your sperm. Okay? So again, it's quite uh, whitish, no? Pearl white in appearance. Gray, translucent. And this is the normal uh, semen viscosity. Okay? So as you can see, it pours in droplets. It's not really totally watery, no? Pero nasa droplets yap po. Discrete droplets. Okay? All right. Ayan. Now, take note for volume dyna testing, dears. You can measure volume by transferring the specimen in graduated cylinders or pwedeng serological pipettes. Okay? So, I'm not, feel na ko ga cylinder mo sa inyong lab, no? So, pwede nyo i-measure. Basta ang increments sa inyong graduated cylinder kay 0.1 ml. Okay? So, uh, ilahang differences or katong mga graduations dito. Okay? Alright. May pa ang graduated cylinder ni graduate. Charot. Okay? Alright. May mga iba dyan na wala. Charot lang bitaw. Na, na ano pa feeler. Charot. Okay. Check lang. Okay. Alright. Next you have um, here uh, again the appearance. No? Normal color. Again, it's quite pearl white as mentioned or gray translucent. Alright. Now we go na to the main star ng Pasco which is your semen analysis. So we're starting first with sperm concentration. Now the normal volume or value for sperm concentration is 20 to 250 million per ml. Alright. That's the Strasinger 6th edition. But for the 5th edition pwede siyang 20 to 160 million per ml. Now correlations or uh, basta ang values kay between 10 to 20 all right, uh, million per ml, that's considered borderline. All right? But again, eh, sa tanan na ano dears, tanan na parameters actually sa imuhang infertility testing or fertility testing for sperm, the sperm concentration and sperm count is, um, according to Brenzel, is not as important as the other characteristics. Why? Because even if, no, medyo naiuban yung mga uh, cases na gamay na siyang sperm count, gamay na siyang sperm concentration, pero nakapaburos ragyapon siya. So therefore, makaingon ka na uh, there are some other parameters yun na mas important kaysa sa sperm count. Although the sperm count and sperm concentration, if there's a decrease in their number, then makaingon ka na it could be associated with infertility. But generally, um, it's not only the parameter na imong lang tawon to, to, to check if the patient is infertile or not. Because again, it's not as important as the other parameters such as motility very important. Morphology, very important then. Viability and even penetration. <laughs> penetration sa imuhang cervix or sa imuhang ovum. Alright? So that's the important na mga characteristics. Because even if at low numbers, niya imuhang sperm kay kusgan na yun, grabe kay ang motility, no? Like, iya po, morphology kay perfect yun. Yes, the, the very ano, ideal shape then. Chances of getting pregnant or chances of having a child or conceiving a child is high. Okay? Alright. Whew, all right, sige. Okay, so for me, ako, dilimang ko. Um, okay, sige, sige. Wait lang. All right. 20 to 15. 20, don't say right soon, don't sir. Um, unang sa nang ka Darlie na question ha. If na ang 20 to 250 and 20 to 160, unsay right na soon doon. Ato na lang mo sa 20 to 250. Because your 20 to 250, it's also mentioned sa graph and bronzel. Mupo lang normal na concentration. Okay? Uh, Kaling 20 to 160, medyo sa old na. Alright? Pero siguro, wala man na yung mga ng question. Siguro, given lang mo o value, and then kamuna interpret siguro. Okay, nana siguro siya. Uh, sir, nag-mention sa stress na abnormal ang string and clumped specimen. But what if less than 2 cm pero daghan sila nga string like? Um, siguro if ilan ang case mer, kay daghan mang string like, then that could be abnormal. Okay? Um, ayon sa? Less than 2 cm pero daghan silang string like. Um, daghan silang string like. It could be ano, it could be a a cause of 
wait, is this after na liquefaction? Because after liquefaction, the presence of mga gelatinous bodies or mga string or mga mucus is normal. No, medyo normal lang siya. Meaning wala sila na apil o um o uh, ni? O liquefy. But that's normal if na mga gelatinous bodies. Uh, if naka-experience mo sa mga boys pag examine, di ba, murag na yung mga kumpul-kumpul gyapon, even after liquefaction, that is normal. Uh, that's the gelatinous bodies. Pero if kanisha, if dili pa, if after liquefaction yung mga string-like, then okay, that's normal. Um, as long as, um, mga mura siya kumpul-kumpul lang, as long as the majority of the fluid is liquefied yun. Because the important there, the importance there is again, um, muliquify siya kaya dili ka proceed to the other parameters if dili siya muliquify kay clutter mo ang sample pero if wala pa siya na liquify like sa sample plan ga measure ka niya daghan ng strings then that could be abnormal alright especially if tag-as ang mga strings okay so yes invisible string ganun lang okay alright sige so that's for uh, your appearances okay alright now for sperm concentration um Manual siya, okay? We still perform manual count. But again, there are already automated procedures or automated machines, analyzers for this, all right? Now, of course, we need dilution. The normal dilution na ginagamit is 1 is to 20. So it's the most common prepared using a mechanical positive displacement na pipette. The diluents, ang normal na to dirge is formalin, sodium bicarbonate, which is the traditional diluting fluid. You can also use saline and even distilled water. But I think yung gigamit is tap water na cold or chilled. Okay? Kung sa ganit purpose, nga ano ta mag-dilute o uh, sperm or semen? Sige daw, be. Kung sa so may discuss sa inyong lab class, nga ano ta mag-dilute? Kung sa so may purpose niya? To? For sperm concentration. Sige. Kung sa so man, why do we need dilution? Mobilize, sir. To? Kung sa to? Mobilize the sperm. Mobilize? Mobilize. Immobilize. Okay, very good. Take note of that, dears. No, very good. So the purpose of your diluents is to immobilize the sperm. Very good. Because remember, mag sperm count ka or sperm concentration, niya, magamit ka og your, your uh, sana, hemocytometer, niya, galihok imuhang sperm. Lisod kayo siya count. Okay? So therefore, you need to immobilize uh, the sperm using the diluents. Okay, very good. Now, take note, dears. Na koy, sayup diri, dears, ha? Kani siya, dili ni siya WBC. RBC na siya, dears, pasensya, sorry. It's 5 RBC squares. Okay? Take note of that. All right. Now, this is the long method, standard new Bauer formula. Um, again, number of sperms counted times the dilution or dilution factor atong i-reciprocal over area times the depth factor which is at a constant of 0.1. But take note, if kanira siya na formula, wala ning times 1,000, ang equivalent ana is per microliter. But we need for sperm concentration, dapat nato siya per milliliters. So therefore, ang imuhang per microliter, I'm not sure if klaro ba sa whiteboard. Klaro ra ba? Okay. So per microliter, di ba? If imong answer is per microliter, na siya sa ilalong, remember that your per microliter, one microliter is equal to 1,000 ml. So therefore, para makuha na ang ml, you need to multiply 1,000 UL per 1 ml. Kani siya na conversion factor. Para makancel ang microliter, alright, para ang makuha ni mo is per ml na. That's why na I times 1,000. Okay? So because again, ang kailangan nato na unit for sperm concentration times 1,000 ml. Now remember na yung mga shortcut method dyan. Sir, how is how was it derived? Sige. Ato na siyang i-derive. Okay. So kung 2 WBC squares atong gamiton for counting. So for counting sa Sperm concentration, dears, you can use the 5 RBC squares, okay? Or pwede put ang 2 large WBC squares, okay? So, sana maklaro na. Okay, alright. So again, uh, start as a 2 WBC squares. So ang 2 WBC squares, pila man ang area, Anna? Pila may area, Anna, kung 2 WBC? 2. Sa area? Okay, very good. So 2. 2 millimeters squared, tama. 2 millimeters squared. Alright? Now, ato na siyang ipansak, <laughs> ato na siyang isubstitute ani na formula sa ilalo. So, wala rasa ng sperms counted. So, over, uh, dilution na to is 20. So, 20 muna. Over, uh, area is 2 mm squared times the depth which is 0.1. So, therefore, your your answer there, or mapadulong siya og 20 over 0 0.2. And 20 over 0 0.2 is equal to um, 100. Tama ba? 20 divided by 0 0.2 is 100. Am I right? Okay. <laughs> bugo, bugo sa math, dears. Tama ba? Or 20 divided by 0.2 is 10? 10 ba? 10, no? Or 100? 10? 
call a friend. <laughs> Tama, 10. 10, daily 100. Okay, 10. Alright? And remember, this 10, ato siyang i-multiply o 1,000. And 10 times 1,000 is equal to pilaman. Uh, ay, 100 lagi, sabi ko na. 100, ay, sabi. 20 divided by 0.2 is 100. And remember, nat ato siyang i-multiply o 1,000 para mahimong per ml. So, 100 times 1,000 pilaman. 100,000. So, muna siya shortcut. If you're using 2 WBC squares. Okay? Now, if you're using 5 RBC squares, remember, on sa ganyang area sa 5 RBC squares, di ba 1 RBC square is on sa man? On siyang area? Kung, five R, uh, kung 1 RBC. On siyang area? 0 0.01. 0 0.04. 4. 1 or 4? On sa giyong? 0.04. Four. Okay, so 0 0.04 ang usaka RBC square. But you're using 5, so therefore, you multiply the 5. Okay, so, so thank you, Mayor. Oh, I, I don't know, kasi pangisog. So area is 0.2 millimeter square. That's for 5 RBC squares. So still, Japan, using the formula, so 20 sa taas, kay dilution factor, that's the normal, okay, over 0.2 millimeter squared times 0.1. So you're left with 20 over uh, 0. 0, 2. Am I right, my dears? Ang answer ati, ani is kay 1,000. Okay? And 1,000 times 1,000 to produce para makonvert siya, you have 1 million. Alright? That's the shortcut. How it is derived. Okay? Alright. But take note, dears, kanina siya na shortcut magamit ra if ang dilution is 1 is to 20. Okay? Now, na-instances na possible na increase yung dilution or mumabay yung dilution depende sa specimen and depende sa yung protocols sa laboratory, then you have to perform na lang the long method. Okay? Para safe good ta. Alright? But if you mentioned ra sa inyong problem na sperm is or semen is diluted at 1 is to 20, then you can perform the uh, the shortcut. Okay? Alright. Para mas easy ang life. Okay? Alright. So that's for your sperm concentration. Now, get ready, dears. Okay lang. Ang pag yes, Okay. Sige. Next, we have the different counting chambers that we can use. Of course, we can use uh, number one. Sorry. Your <laughs> Neubauer counting chamber. Okay? So we can also use this Mackler counting chamber. All right? And kung Mackler counting chamber, dears, we don't need to dilute the sample. So ang sample is undiluted. Okay? All right. Tapos, sperms are immobilized by heat. So, imo siyang i-heat gamay. All right? Prior to charging the chamber. And sperm motility is um, examined in the other chamber na wala gi-heat. So, imuhang sample, imuhang siyang i-heat gamay, imuhang siyang i-divide, imuhang i-heat, tapos i-charge sa chamber, alright? And then katong wala, wala ni mo gi-heat, muto siya mo-examine for motility. So, it's two, uh, two in one. Okay? And of course, the routine nato, dears, is the new Bauer counting chamber. Same ragi sa HEMA. As mentioned, pwede siyang makount at the four corner and center squares of the large center squares. So, same sa RBC count. Uh, it should be, it should settle at uh, three to five minutes and the counts should agree within 10% for precision purposes. If wala nag-agree ang counts within 10%, you have to perform it again. Okay? All right. Now, counts are performed using either phase or bright field microscopy. Um, na yung bang laboratories magamit ang phase contrast, pero the routine bright field microscopy can uh, is okay already. And of course, ay mo i-count lang kaya mga fully developed sperms. If you can see mga WBCs or immature sperms such as spermatids, all right, those are known as your round cells. So that's a different counting na po. So if makakita ka WBCs or or, uh, or spermatids pag count ni mo, you have to uh, finish muna counting the normal na mga sperms. And then after finishing that, you then count the norm, uh, the abnormal, mga WBCs and spermatids or mga round cells. All right. So for for counting that, no, if ma count niyo siya, pwede po din yung uh, mugamit og stain in your diluting fluid to differentiate the leukocytes from the sperm spermatids. So you can perform a smear yun. All right. Uh, is smear ni mo imuhang uh, semen and then is stain ni mo siya para ma differentiate ang imuhang uh, spermatids and your WBCs because they may look the same. All right. Okay. So that's for the counting chamber. That's for sperm concentration. All right? So again, uh, these are inclusion criterias from graph, pareha sa RBCs. So for graph, ang iyaha daw, kay include ni mo ang sperm na ang head, iyang head ha, nag-touch sa upper and sa left na mga borders. If iyahang, uh, di ni mo include ang right and lower border. So same siya sa imong RBC count, di ba? Na upper and left yata, no? Ang imuhang i-appeal. That's the inclusion criteria of counting your sperm cells. And this is an example of your um, counting chamber, Mackler. So as you can see, circular siya. And you don't need, again, dilution. 
Alright? Okay, sige. So, sample problem. Ayan, sige daw. One sperm rare daw is counted using two WBC squares. So, kamo daw solve, Anabi? So, of course, we can use the shortcut. Pwede naman siyang i-times diretso og 100,000. So, the answer there is, of course, 100,000 sperms per ml. Or the long way, di ba? Pwede siyang 1 times 20 over uh, 2 times 0.1. So, same again, 20 times uh, 0.2. The answer is 100, and then you multiply that by 1,000. The answer is 100,000. That's the the long method. Okay, all right. That's for two WBC squares. And sa ilalom five RBC Japan asa dear sana sa yup ko five RBC squares. So still Japan, pero hindi mo siyang imultiply direct show of one times one million. Again, gi provided na ang dilution dimension one is to twenty ha. Pero if wala gani kay Pwede kang, if wala lagi mention na 1 is to 20 or nag-mention of other dilution, then you perform the long way. Okay? So, kani diri, wala yung dilution, no? So, ako pa, Jimmy, mismo nagpabuyag. But anyway, ako lang i-assume na 1 is to 20 diri. Okay? So, uh, 1, if 5 RBC, so 1 times 1 million. So, therefore, the answer is 1 million per uh, ml. Okay? And for long way, of course, 1 times 20 over 0.2 uh, times 0.1. Okay? So that's 20 over 0.02. The answer is 1,000 times 1,000. The answer is 1 million. That's the long way and the shortcut. Okay. All right. So that's how we solve. Okay. And so board exam, dear sperm is if na mga solving mga ganis sa CM, it's sperm. Okay. Sperm concentration yun na. Okay. So di yun na mawala. All right. Kana mga sperm concentration, sperm count. Di yun na mawala. Okay. So if na is solving sa board exam sa sperm yun na sa semen yun na. Okay. I'm telling you, promise. Nigo sa sa kung boards. Okay. All right. Sigi. So now for sperm concentration, of course, for sperm concentration, na yung bang doctors. Uh, that would require the sperm count because the sperm count it already denotes the entire ejaculate, the number of sperm in the entire ejaculate, and because it's talking about the entire ejaculate, so you just multiply the sperm concentration by the volume of your semen. So, example, you have 20 million sperms na na collect or na me, na na measure sa imuhang um, imuhang sperm concentration. You multiply by the volume, which is 2 ml. So, makancel imuhang ml. All right. So you're left na lang with 40 million sperms, and that is now the sperm count. So as you can see, di ba? Wala na siya per ml because it's talking a per ejaculate na day. Per ejaculate, sorry. So per ejaculate na siya. So it's all talking about the entire ejaculate. Dili na lang siya per ml. Okay. So in mas ano gitsa mas comprehensive in a way or appeal na gitan nan entire ejaculate. Okay. So as you can see, 20 million is the minimum, di ba, of normal na sperm concentration. Okay. And 2 ml is the minimum volume na normal sa semen. So therefore, in multiply ni mo siya. 40, therefore, is the minimum na normal sa imuhang sperm count. So, the normal value is greater than equal 40 million per ml. Okay? So, that's for sperm count and sperm concentration. So, in order to answer sperm count, kailangan siya ka musog for sperm concentration. Okay? Alright. Sige. So, that's for sperm count. Next, we go now to another parameter, your sperm motility. Okay? Because remember that your sperm is motile. Na asya ikog, of course. And why is this flagella needed? It's because to propel itself padulong sa cervix. Okay? Kaya siya man ang mo effort para mo add to sa egg. Okay? Alright, actually, it's a two-way method. Pero ang sperm, yun, kailangan siya mo swim padulong dito. So therefore, kailangan siya og flagella. Alright? So we assess again using a liquefied specimen or semen within one hour. And ato siyang i-read or mo... Ato siya butang og slide, di ba? Pwede rin siyang cover slip method. Diretso og one drop and then butang og cover slip and then examine uh, under 20 HPF or mukhang kag 200 sperms. Okay? And then you look the motility, no? Or you observe the motility and describe uh, on sa yahang motility. Okay? Normal values, greater than 50% is motile within one hour and greater than 2 or A or B ilahang grading. Okay? Alright. So that's for uh, sperm <clears throat> motility. Again, pila ka... Pila ka Sperms ang kailangan, 200 sperms ilang ang i-count. And pila ka HPF, pwedeng 20 HPF. Okay, or high power fields. All right, okay, sige. Now for sperm motility, again, take note. Ay, sorry, you have here the automated na, na machine in analyzing semen. You have the CASA, Computer Assisted Semen Analysis. Okay, all right. <laughs> These guys are very fast. 
<laughs> okay. Um, so again, CASA. Sige, mag-chikat after. So CASA, Computer Assisted Semen Analysis, take note, it it takes into account both the sperm velocity and trajectory, direction of the motion. But aside from that, it can also include sperm concentration and morphology. Na. So um, usually, kanil siya na machine, it's found in mga high-end, mga andrology laboratory. So katong mga mucator for IVF, mga, mga intra... Um, um, kana mga IVF, mga... Um, mga fertility testing in ana so sila nang mo na ay mga kasa all right so again unsay gina determine trajectory and velocity so asa asa ang direction sa sperm and unsay yahang velocity aside from that they can also mention or measure your concentration and morphology yeah so kamusta man yung mga results mga orbs natin diyan normal lang ba okay <laughs> normal lang ba <laughs> Pas pas ra, okay ra, okay, alright, <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, this is your casa, okay, the computer assisted semen analysis, ayan casa, okay. And uh, for grading, yes, na mention na ni um ni sani ni Lenos, yes. Uh, this is the grading, pero you can also use this. I think na uban na kanina ginagamit, okay, kaning alternative sperm motility grading. But again, for exam purposes, gina ask lagi ako ni, okay, kaning grading criteria, alright. So ang grade four is the rapid straight line motility. Three is slower, some lateral. Two is slow forward, noticeable lateral movement. Okay. And one is no forward progression and zero kay no movement yun. So you have to look uh, sa fields yun kung i-estimate lang. Pila yun ani ang murag 50%. Uh, pila, pila man ani ang four. Pila man ang three. Pila ang two. Na, na. Or you could count yun 200 sperms and then you divide that over 200. So example, mukhang ka. Pila ka sperms ang Four, no? Let's say 100 out of 200. So, times mo na siya uh, by 100. 100 divided by 200 times 100. Imong e find the percentage in ana. Or, again, examine ka 20 high power fields. And then you look overall kung unsagwi mo rag general na motility sa imuha mga sperms. Okay? Is it 4? Is it 3? Is it 2? Or A, B, C, and D. So, ang normal is dapat greater than 2. Ayan. Uh, within one hour. Alright? Uh, or greater than A or B. Okay, so kanang one below, dili na siya normal. Alright? Now, the alternative sperm motility grading is progressive, linearly or in a large circle. Um, Non-progressive, galihok siya, pero wala siya nag-forward progression. So, naglihok ra siya in place. Okay? <laughs> diba? Sperm moving with an absence of progression. Naglihok ra siya in place. And immotility, wala gay movement. Alright? So, that's for uh, grading. So, take note dear sa kanyang mga criteria, lumalabas pa rin. Uh, sabur, sab, sab, sabur, sabur, sab, boards. Na ay lahi, sir, ang katong na ay greater than 25%. Hmm. Law ka ba? Sa, wait lang ha. Let me check. Nasa Strasinger, Lenos? Dears? Sa WHO, siya, sir, nga criteria. Ang nakabutang sa concert kay mm. if 50% are, moti are mm. motile in categories A, B, and C, muna uh, normal, or 25% with progressive uh, motility a and B. So, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, meron ka ba sa day ko, Ani? Wala ko na-mention. Tama. Uh, so, yeah, pwede na ito siya. So, if greater than 50, motile siya at A, B, and C. Pero if greater than, normal siya if greater than 50, motile A, B, and C. And normal rag siya if greater than 25, motile sa A and B. Tama, no? Tama kung yes, pag-interpret. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, in a way, yeah, that's shocked. Thank you for that, Lenos. Nalimot kong mention. Yeah. Meron ka ba sa day ko, Ani? <laughs> yeah. That's true. Um, imagine, Gipamabad nila ang imuhang reference. Because remember, at A and B, kung daghan nag yung motil dito na A and B yun, then pwede na na as low as 25% and above, pwede na makonsider as normal. But in the case na could be na daghang C dito, um, or if ano, uh, na, na, na mix siya, no, mix siya na dilig yun A, tanan, B, or C na na. So if greater than 50% no, uh, of A, B, and C na motil, then possible normal ragyapon siya. So uh, kung majority sa mohang semen or sperm deers kay progressive rag yun ang motility or um, normal rag siya, then pwede yung katong dimension na less, uh, greater than 25%, basta A and B iyahang motility, all right, then that's considered normal. Pero if nakay makita na murag C or uh, mixed siya A, B, and C, dapat greater than 50%. Yes. Thank you for that, Dane. Nalimot kong mention. But yes, that's true. Alright? So that's for motility. But again, for exam purposes, dear ha, lumalabas pa rin ang kaning tabular um, criteria of your sperm motility. Okay? Alright. So um, take note of that. Alright? So uh, ang grading and iyahang mga uh, uh, unsay description. Alright. Okay. So that's for your sperm motility. Now very, ano gitu Very... 
as in. So, I hope normal lang inyong mga sperms dyan. Okay, pwede pa naman. Okay pa. Alright? <laughs> sa sperm motility. In terms of sperm motility. So, uh, this is an important characteristic you dear. So, as I've mentioned, sperm concentration, although it is, yeah, included in the parameter, pero its importance, yun, is not again that important compared to the other parameters. Because as I mentioned, even if gamay imuhang, imuhang sperm concentration, pero imuhang sperm, kusgan kayo mo swim, no? paspas kayo mo lihok, then the chances of pregnancy is still there or of conceiving a child is still there. Okay? All right. So that's for sperm motility. Next, we have uh, here a wet mouth. Of course, wala siya galihok. <laughs> Kay picture ni siya. This is from graph. Okay? So we have here an RBC and a WBC. So wet mouth lang siya. And of course, I'm sure naka-experience na mo. So thank, thankfully, naka-experience na good mo, dears. No? Subjective. Yeah, yeah. Tama. Actually, yeah, for for um, measuring or for... For... Kanang, sorry, for... Sorry, wait lang, ha? Tessa, nag-ano sa ako kay init. <laughs> for, for grading, motility, or for examining this, dears, especially sa morphology po, it's quite subjective. So depending kung siya sa... Um, sa imuhang, um, imuhang laboratory yan on how mo interpret siya. Because again, na sum lateral, na noticeable lateral. Sige, ito na lang siyang i-define. When you say sum lateral, medyo gamay lang iyahang, uh, iyahang pagkilid. No? So example, imuhang sperm, majority pagyapon kay pa straight, pero mo baliko siya gamay. That's sum lateral. Pero ang noticeable lateral, dali pa lang, baliko na siya. Okay? Alright. So, ang imuhang, ang imuhang some lateral movement, so, ni straight siya, pero medyo nilihiwi. Some lateral movement. Pero ang noticeable, kaysa sugod pa lang, nilihiwi na gid siya. Nagdigid siya uh, straight line iyahang motility. Okay? Pero if, iya, ang pasabot na ako sa motility, dears, is iyahang pag-swim, okay, kay ni baliko na dayon. Okay? Pero if ni swim siya na straight, tapos ni turn ra siya, that's still normal. Okay? Kay straight line man. Pero pag sugod pa lang, medyo murag ni baliko na siya, then that's noticeable lateral. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So in a way, again, as I mentioned, medyo subjective siya. Alright? Uh, basta inyo hang itake note lang is, um, iyahang speed, no? And ang direction. If magliko-liko na ganit siya, that's lateral movement na yun. Okay? Um, that's why siguro, there is an alternative motility grading kaysa aning sa WHO or kanyang mga grading. It's because, it's prone to subjectivity. Whereas, pag latan mo sa alternative, imo lang lang tawon kung linearly siya or in a large circle. And then, kung absence of progression na, non-progressive, di ba? And immotility, no movement. So, mas easy lang siya to interpret. Okay? Kaning sa atong lower table. Alright? But yeah, so again, that's subjective. Again, very subjective. That's why we are also looking, or we have already machines, no? That could prevent this subjectivity para mas standardize ato ang pag-examine. Okay. Alright. Thank you for that, Mayor. Alright. Now, we go now to your sperm morphology. Ayan. Unsa may itsura sa sperm? Is it pretty? <laughs> Is it perfect? Okay, ayan. Now, for sperm morphology, the normal values, again, uh, pwede siyang, it follows the routine or the strict criteria. For routine criteria, uh, greater than 30% ang normal forms. And for strict criteria, as you can see, strict to nagid siya, less than, uh, mugamay mo hang reference, dapat greater than 14, okay, ang uh, normal forms. Kaya the strict criteria, you then perform measurement, or also known as morphometry, no? Morphometry. So you measure, again, the size, no? You measure the size, the head, the neck, the tail, no? Uh, you also measure the acrosome size, you also evaluate the presence of vacuoles sa head ba, sa imuhang sperm. And it's not routinely performed, pero recommended siya by WHO. Why? Because it's time-consuming. Okay? Kaya imagine, mag-measure pa ka, alright? Magamit pa ka micrometer. Yeah, daghan kayong sperms, nag-alihok, shocks, and sa kahit di man siya mag-alihok, kaya imo man i stain But anyway, like, uh, lisod kayo siya i-identify. Kaya medyo, or taas siya, time-consuming siya. Because you need to measure pa and everything. Alright? But it's recommended by WHO. So of course, for staining, uh, the recommended stain is your Papa Nicolaus. Alright? But uh, if wala yung Papa Nicolaus, you can use the right stain. Alright? And Gemsa. I think nagamit mo rights, no? Uh, Eosin and methylene blue for your lab procedure. So okay ra. Okay. Now for the normal characteristics of your sperm, dears, as you can see, the head is oval. Alright? Pero dimension sa graph, dears, it could also be flattened na oval. Alright? Flattened oval or oval, that's the uh, appearance of the head. Uh, the shape, uh, it's 5 micrometers long, iyahang size, and the width is 3 micrometers. Now, the acrosomal cap, ayan, this enzyme uh, containing acrosomal cap, which is needed for ovum penetration, it should accompany or it should encompass approximately one half of the head and cover two-thirds of the sperm nucleus. Alright, so ito nang i-draw. Again, so flattened, no? Pasensya, ang pangit talaga ng joint ko. So, flattened na oval. 
Ayan. Flattened oval. Your acrosomal cap, again, should encompass one half of the head. Ayan. One half of the... Ay, <laughs> medyo sumobra sa so one half. So take note how one half. Okay. And it should cover at least two-thirds of the nucleus. So muni siya ang nucleus. Okay? Ayan. So this is the acrosome. Okay? And you have here the nucleus. So yan na-cover ang nucleus um, na ano. Uh, eh, the nucleus is covered mga two-thirds. Okay? All right. Uh, two-thirds. Uh, this is the entire nucleus pala. Ayan. Okay. And the nucleus there, you mentioned it should comprise 65% of the head. So take note of that. Next is the midpiece, which is your... Um, the midpiece, which is the thickest part, it's seven micrometers long because it contains the mitochondrial sheath. Okay, and this mitochondrial sheath produces the energy required for motility. And for the tail, of course, it's about forty-five meters, uh, micrometers long, or sa graph fifty to fifty-five. Sa Brunzel, it's minimum of forty-five micrometers. Okay, so forty-five micrometers iya hang lang. Diba? So, mura siyag. Balloon. <laughs> mura siyag balloon akong gidro. <laughs> but anyway, take note of that, dear sa kanyang mga measurement, lumalabas pa rin sa boards. Again, take note. Head, 5 micrometers long, 3 micrometers wide. Okay? The acrosome should encompass one half of the head and covers two-thirds of the nucleus. Ayan, take note. The neck should contain, again, uh, should be 7 micrometers long and it's the thickest part because it contains the mitochondrial sheath and the tail yahang measurement should be again 45 micrometers at least 45 micrometers okay so take note of that lumalabas pa rin dears kanyang mga measurement okay so ang question na, na usually is acrosome the acrosomal cap should encompass blank again one half of the nucleus so dapat one uh, one half of the head sorry one half of the head two thirds sa nucleus so how do I remember I think uh, dapat mas makover ni ang ulog yun, one half. So, mas dako ang one half. Ideally, mas dako ang two thirds, bobo, Mark. Okay? So, one half dapat sa head and two thirds sa nucleus. Again, remember, uh, one half of the head, two thirds of the nucleus. Lumalabas pa rin. Promise. That's a very common question kanang mayin, Anna. The acrosomal cap should encompass blank. Letter A, letter B, letter C, letter D. As in, very common question. Okay? All right. Sige. Now, we go now to your sperm morphology. Again, um, you stain, di ba? You make a smear. Diba? So, same ra sa smear sa hima or pwede siyang mubutan ka drop sa osaka slide and then imong patungan o another slide and then imong siya i-pull apart. Ayan. Pull apart merg sa histo. Um, then you stain again using Papa Nicolaus. If wala, rites or gemsa. Alright? And then you examine under uh, it, oil immersion. Alright? And about 200 cells imuhang i-count. Alright? So, imong i-total ang number sa normal and then i-total po, i-divide siya by the total number of cells counted times 100. And that is the percentage of normal sperm cells. All right? Now, sperm morphology, again, is evaluated with respect to the structure of the head, the neck piece, the mid piece, and the tail. So if na abnormality sa head, of course, na problem sa ovum penetration because ang head man ang mo penetrate sa imuhang uh, ova, sa egg. And abnormalities in the neck piece, mid piece, and tail, of course, motility. So if medyo baga ang iyang neck piece, iyang tail kay double, iyang tail kay mubo, iyang, um, iyang mid piece kay medyo baga, so therefore, maglisod siya og lihok kay baga man or defective iyang diri sa tail dapit. Okay? All right. So that's for um, <laughs> the sperm morphology. Okay, so here is the normal deers, um, na shape of your sperm. Actually, as you can see, kung side view siya lang tawad, ayan, it is shaped pyriform or arrowhead. So that's still considered normal. Okay, basi makathik mo na, sir, di na lagi na oval. Oval siya kung uh, on the top ni mo siya lang tawad. Pero kung sa side view gani, it can be pyriform or arrowhead. Parehas ani. And that's still normal. That's why it's sa graphs, gimension siya na it is flattened oval. Kaya na siya arrowhead shape or pwede siyang pyriform. Alright? Now, of course, here are some of the abnormal abnormal sperms, of course. It could be dako kayang ulo. Yes. <laughs> Post-acrosomal cap. Pwede yung gamay iyahang head or tapered iyahang head. Pwede yung tapered head na walay acrosome. As you can see, wala yung acrosome na kitaan. You have acrosomal deficiency. Wala yung acrosome. Uh, F na yung mga vacuo sa head. G na ay med, med, mid piece defect na ay cytoplasmic droplet. You have H, you have bent mid piece. I and J coiled ang tail, of course. Um, K and L, pwedeng, uh, uh, ang K ni mo kay bipo, ano na? Double tail ang K. L kay fair, pairing phenomenon, duwas lang kabuo. Ang M is the spermatid, dear. So as you can see, Marshall WBC, that's still an immature sperm. And then you have N double headed or bicephalic sperm. Take note of that. 
Okay, so it's normal naman to find a few na mga abnormal sperms from your sample. Of course, basta as much as possible, majority pa rin are in normal morphology. Because if na mga abnormalities, okay, it could point to a uh, possible condition. Um, each of this each of this abnormality dears is not specific for a particular disease because a particular disease in the reproductive tract can no can indicate or can cause a lot of abnormalities sa sperm okay it's not only one it's not specific all right um, so possible na mag combine nila makita ng mga abnormal sperms in um, in a particular disease okay so one abnormality it's not particular in one uh, disease okay all right so here is an example of your spermatid as you can see more like WBC no more <laughs> like plasma cell or whatever so that's an immature um, uh, sperm that's why we need to correct okay or that's why we need to count it different Uh, than your WBC count. Okay? Now, of course, for varicocell deers, uh, which is, as we have mentioned, is the um, hardening of the veins that drain the testes, and the most common cause of your male infertility, the characteristic appearance of the sperm head is tapered. Take note of that. So, you may be thinking, Sir, di ba, anak ka na, dili man, characteristic yun, ang usak abnormality sa disease. Yes, dili gani. Pero, for varicocell, ayan, varicocell, the most common na makitaan na abnormality Normality is tapered head. Take note of that. Tapered or cigar shape. Marasag, cigarilyo. Tapered head, cigar shape. Okay. All right. So that's for sperm morphology. Okay. So take note of that. So unsa na stain na itong gamiton? Pwede yung Papa Nicolaus or the right stain. Okay. Next parameters, of course, sperm viability. For sperm viability, yes, we determine kung pila ka percentage yun ang buhi. Okay, ani nila, all right? And what we use or the test that we use is the modified Bloom's test. And the reagents, your eucin and nigrosine, all right? So, ang purpose, Anna, dears, or ang principle is that live sperms, okay, their membrane is still intact. So, therefore, they cannot absorb the eucin. So, they will be stained uh, bluish. Uh, they will not take up the stain. They will be unstained or bluish white. Whereas, katong mga dead sperms, okay, they, they their membrane is already damaged. So, they will take up the eucin. So, therefore, they will stain color red. Now, what is the normal value? 50% are living according to the Strasinger 6 edition. And for the older Strasinger, 75%. Okay, so, ano na lang, siguro, um, we'll, stick, we'll stick with 50% na living sperms ang normal. All right? Now, kung decrease ang sperm vitality, meaning daghang na nga matay na sperm, pero normal rang sperm concentration, um, ay, sorry, sorry. If normal rang sperm concentration pala, pero markedly decreased ang motility, it means na, na ay, Uh, decreased sperm viability, meaning daghang cells ang namatay. Okay? So, majority of the sperm na naasa mo ang sample kay patay. Okay? Kay they are immotile. So, therefore, if makakita kag sperm na immotile, okay, then most likely that is dead. Okay? Kaya na siya galiho. That's dead. Okay? Alright. So, the purpose of your sperm viability also, dears, is we have to determine or it can differentiate if ang cause ba sa immotility sa imong sperm is because patay gud siya or because na defect sa flagella okay so it's possible magud na immotile ang sperm kay na siya defect sa flagella all right pero um, it's possible pod na wala na siya galihok kay patay na siya all right so that's the purpose then of your sperm viability all right so here's an example of your um, eucin nigrosine again color red are the dead sperms and the white are the live sperms okay now the presence of a large proportion of vital ayan taas ay muhang viability no pero immotile or daghan kang imuhang sperm motility kay low then it indicates na defective ang flagellum sa imuhang mga sperm whereas kung high number of immotile okay and non viable cells it may indicate epididymal pathology or nagui problema sa imuhang mga sperms kay pagpagawas pa lang daan patay na siya okay kay taas man imuhang Uh, taas man imuhang emotil, alright? meaning wala galiho, niya taas po ang non-viable, meaning mga patay. So therefore, sa sulit lang daan, sa organ, sa male, na naging problema. Okay? Kay paggawas niya, patay na daan ng sperms. Alright? And this is important because bahalag taas kang sperm concentration pero majority of them are dead pala, then of course, they cannot penetrate the ovum and can conceive a child. So therefore, this is very important then, your sperm Uh, viability. Okay? So again, sa ito ang stain, your uh, eosin uh, negrosin uh, stain. Okay? All right. Um, okay. All right. Now, the percentage of your dead sperm cells there should not exceed the percentage of emotile sperm. So example, if 65% are dead of the specimen, okay, So, wait lang ha. How's ang erase? So, again, as mentioned, the percentage of the emotile cells, all right, Uh, or the percentage of the dead cells, sperm cells, should not exceed 
the percentage of the emotile cell. So let's say 65% daw is emotile. So therefore, maka-expect ka na ang remaining 35, all right, are the remaining na mga motil. So therefore, yung mga 35, makaingon ka na, muna lang siya ang value na possible na buhi ang sperms. Kaya makaingon ka na, kaning 65%, kaning sila na mga emotil, they're most likely dead na yun. Okay? Or wala sa live flagella. So, so the same, uh, it's still emotil. Alright? So therefore, ang remaining na 35 para 100%, diba? makaingon ka na lang ka na, this is the only number left or the only amount left of mga motil and viable Uh, sperms. So therefore, motility cannot exceed 35%. Because kaning 65% na patay na, na mga sperm cells, makayon po ka na, imotil ni sila. So therefore, the remaining 35, muna lang ni siya ang possible na motil. It cannot exceed beyond. Okay? So it's 35 and below na lang yun ang mga motil na cells. Kaya ang 65%, nakita ni mo na non-viable na. And when you say it's non-viable, meaning it's all also imotil. Di na siya kalihok. Kaya patay na good. Alright? So therefore, ang remaining sa na 35, muna ni ang amount na possible na motil ang sperm cells. Okay? So, 35% na lang of the sample is motil. Okay? Because the 65% is non-viable and immotil. Okay? So, muna siya point that the percentage of the, of the dead sperm cells um, should not exceed the percentage of the immotil sperm. Okay? Because again, same dapat sila. Alright? Okay? Kung, say, kung dead sperm cells, makainguan po ka, kung patay na siya, Dibo ko siya muliho. So, emotil siya. Alright? Okay. Okay. So, that's for your uh, sperm uh, viability. Okay? So, again, sa itong stain gamiton, eosin negrosin. Okay. Alright. So, that's for your sperm viability. Okay? So, um, we now proceed to the remaining na lang. Habit na mo, ma? Charot. Okay. So, mga, um, we're done now with the major parameters. Good, no? Sperm motility, morphology, concentration, count, and imuhang uh, sperm sa to? viability. Okay. Now, take note, all of these are performed after liquefaction. You cannot perform these parameters even before or during na na-clot pa siya. All right? Now, we go na to mga additional testing na lang, usually mga chemical and mga immunological testing. Starting first with seminal fluid fructose. No? Another reason why there could be a decrease in fertility or there is infertility, it's because there's a decrease in the amount of fructose uh, in your semen. And remember that fructose is needed as an, an energy source for your um sperm. So therefore, if gamay siya, possible na wala siya na, wala na nourish o tarong imuhang sperms. Alright? So how do we measure? We measure it uh, using the resourceful test, a qualitative test, okay? And the positive result is orange-red color. Also known as the Saliwanoff's test, di ba? Remember sa to ang uh, classic chemical tests, your resourceful or Saliwanoff's test. Positive result is orange-red color. Now take note, it should be tested within two hours or frozen if not delayed to prevent Fructo, fructolysis, okay, or the, the consumption of the fructose. Now, normal quantitative levels, greater than equal 13 micromole per ejaculate. So that's the normal. All right. Now, another reason why there could be infertility is the presence of anti-sperm antibodies, both from the males and females. And most common good kaysa males ang uh, makita ng anti-sperm antibodies. So, ano man siya ma-produce, no? Possible na na-eye disruption sa barrier sa testes and the blood. Ma-expose ay muhang sperm dito sa blood and the antigens there will be Um, will elicit the formation of antibodies, okay? And hence, the production of anti-sperm antibodies. So therefore, pwede siya ma-detect sa imuhang serum, pwede po sa cervical mucosa, sa imuhang females, alright? Or sa semen mismo, okay? So different methods to perform, you have the mixed agglutination reaction. So it detects the presence of IgG antibodies. So what we're detecting are, again, anti-sperm antibodies. So atong i drawing. So let's say imuhang semen or imuhang sperm, anara dear sa, na na siya antibody da na nakataput, okay, which are the anti-sperm antibody, alright? So adani mo siya AHG, which is again an anti-human globulin. So the anti-human globulin will bind to this antibody found in the sperm. This is your AHG, alright? And pag add ni mo sa latex particles na nai IgG, so uh, or RBCs na nai IgG, so therefore mo combine po ni siya dere okay so the ahg sha mo bridge sa gap again between the sperm that contains already the anti sperm antibody on its surface and the latex particles as a as, as an indicator so therefore ma combine sila and together they form agglutination that's mixed agglutination 
reaction. All right? The, the normal is less than 10% of the motile sperm a sperm <laughs> less than a, sorry, less than 10% of the motile sperm are attached to the particles. So imo account pila ka percent ang na ay mga naka-attach sa particles. If less than 10% lang then that is um abnormal. Ah, that's normal. Now another is immuno bead test. Uh, you use pa rin mga beads, alright? Pero ang importance ng anemia dears is makita ni mo kung asa na areas sa sperm ang imuhang antibodies. So possible sa head, bagit ang antibodies naka-attach or yung gi-attack? Is it sa mid-piece? Is it sa tail? Alright? And the normal is the presence of beads on less than 50%. So if nakay makita ang sperm na yung mga beads naka-attach, less than 50% ana of the sperm that contains no beads na naka-attach to it, then that's normal. So here's an example. Ayan, that's your immunobead reaction. As you can see, naka-attach imuhang beads kung asa tong antibodies sa sperm. So pwede din mo ma 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 mahibalan na ah, okay, na siya sa head. So pwede mo makita na IgA head antibody, IgG tail antibody because again, uh, the, the latex bead contains different antibodies for, to the particular antibody naka-attach sa sperm. So it can detect IgG, IgA, or IgM. Okay? All right. Sige. Huh, kutasan ko. All right. So na pwedeng allergy ang someone sa sperm. Okay. All right. Um, not really allergy. Um, siguro it's not more of allergy. Kay, you know, hindi mo po the IgE ang involved. It's more on immune um, mediated reaction. Okay? Uh, it's not necessarily allergy. But once it's presented to um, a, example, cervical mucosa or there is a semen palang daan, it's already attacked by the antibodies. So it will be held, um, it will be held uh, immotile and non-functional. But it's not necessarily an allergic reaction. There could be siguro allergic reaction um, for semen, pero it's not following this mechanism. Okay? Um, it's more siguro on, uh, I'm not sure, wala ko kadungog og semen allergy, pero siguro na possibility, no? Um, depende sa a person, there could be an allergy to semen. Pero um, what we're talking here is more on, not on allergies, but mismo sensitization of your um, semen mismo um, and producing producing uh, antibodies against it. Okay, so it's not more on the allergy uh, na, na mechanism. Okay, so it's more on immune mediated yun na pag present ani, makakitag sperm, patch yun siya dayon or mo-attach din ang antibodies. Hence, it will be um, it will be held immotile and non-functional. All right? So that's for anti-sperm antibodies. Okay. All right. Sige, Aid. Thank you for that question. Okay. So allergic ka ba, Aid? Charot, check All right. Sige. Now, for graphs, we have other mga old methods, dear. So you have the Kibrick method. For Kibrick method, imurang incubate imuhang semen with the serum of uh, the male or serum of the female partner because it's expected na we are thinking that the serum contains antibodies and then we look for agglutination which is obs observed macroscopically. Another is your isojima method. Uh, it uses sperm immobilizing antibody. So ang purpose ng judeers is imo siyang i-compare kung ang fresh sample nimo with a sample that is incubated with complement. Okay? So therefore, kung na ay complement system, Ah, okay. Nag-gets na ako. Alright. So therefore, um, imo siya i-compare ang, ang fresh sample over a sample with complement. So katong sample with complement sa ubos, if na antibodies naka-attach dito sa sperm badaan, so of course, it will lice no? uh, the sperm sa ubos. So therefore, mugamay ang value diri and mo increase ang value diri. So muna siyang a value of 2 indicates the presence of antibodies because again, complement fixation happens. Alright? So if ang sperm mismo uh, na antibodies na attach pag add mo complement, ma-activate ang complement system, mulays ang sperm. So therefore, mawala siya or mugama iyahang value. Okay? So therefore, uh, taasin mo hang value. So a value of 2 indicates the presence of antibodies. Because again, you're comparing the normal fresh sample without the complement over katong sample na na-complement. And again, if the, the sperm contains antibodies attached to it, it will activate the complement, your guinea pig or rabbit complement, therefore lysing the, the sperms, <laughs> therefore mugamay imuhang value sa ubos, so saka imuhang ratio or saka imuhang result. So a value of 2 indicates the presence of antibodies. Okay, alright. Nag-gets na ako siya. Gabi kayo, oh, kasabot, pero nag-gets ko na. Okay, alright. Next, we have chemical testing summary. Ayan, as you can see. You have very uh, take note lang. There's neutral alpha glucosidase. That's for epididymis or epididymis na disorder. Another one that you can use uh, for epididymis disorder, dears, is L-carnitine. Ayan. L-carnitine also is secreted by the epididymis. 
So therefore, pwede siyang ma-measure po as a marker for epididymis disorder. Uh, next, of course, zinc, citric acid, ACP, that's for prostatic fluid. So if decreased yahang value, all right, it will indicate decreased value in the prostatic fluid secretions, which could indicate there's a problem in the prostate gland. <clears throat> okay, excuse me. All right. Now for microbial testing, of course, um, balik na sa round cells. These round cells, again, include your WBCs and the spermatids. Spermatids are immature sperm cells. The normal value should be less than 1 million per milliliters. Again, after uh, counting no WBC count or manual count, uh, sorry, sa imuhang sperm concentration, if makakita kag mga round cells, you have to perform a separate count. And if mabot siya uh, 1 million, you can perform or you can stain or you can make a slide, all right, a smear, and then imusha stain using right stain, okay? Or pwedeng peroxidase staining, pero medyo ano na ang peroxidase. You can perform right stain to differentiate your um, your round cells, spermatids, and WBCs. So you count individually, no? Kung kinsang, sperm, uh, kung kinsang spermatids and WBCs. And if greater than 1 million in WBCs, of course, it indicates infection. And greater than 1 million on spermatids, it indicates uh, disruption in the spermatogenesis. So there could be a problem in the testes, na obstruction, na damage ba dito, or whatever. Basta na disruption in spermatogenesis. So again, remember, ato ang sperm maturation stages. Take note, it starts with spermatogonium, okay? And then two spermatocytes, primary, secondary, followed by the spermatids, and then finally the spermatozoon, which is the mature sperm cell. Okay? So spermatogonium, gonium una, then site, doha ka sites, spermatocytes, Fourth is spermatid, tid, and then lastly is the spermatozoon. All right. Now for microbial testing, of course, bacteria. You have chlamydia, mycoplasma, and urea plasma, mga sexually transmitted disorders. And for candida albicans, as you can see, dears, it can impair your sperm motility by agglutinating with sperm heads. So mo agglutinate together with the sperm heads. So therefore. Wala na, di nakalihok yung muhang sperm. Kaya agglutinate na sila together. Okay, alright. Now, for formula for your round cells, ayan, you can perform the concentration by counting again 100 sperm cells. Ayan. Then you count pila ka number ang spermatids and ang S kay sperm concentration. Yung you multiply. So, this can be performed if sa imuhang hemocytometer wala ka nakaperform and to verify counts from the hemocytometer. So, this is using a stained smear. Again, yung account pila ang Imuhang white blood cells, pila po ang imuhang spermatids. You multiply it by the sperm concentration over 100, and that is the concentration of your round cell. Okay? So, particular round cell. Okay? All right. So, that's for uh, the calculation of the round cells. Okay. So, again, pila ka sperms, kailangan na to 100. Okay. All right. Next, of course, another reason why we perform uh, your semen analysis. Katoto mga na-mention ganina, it's all for fertility testing. Now, this one here, it's usually used for more serious uh, cases, especially medical legal cases, especially in determining mga rape cases. Trigger warning, again, content warning, all right? So we're talking about rape and sexual abuse. So pasensya, all right? So trigger warning, all right? Now, uh, tests for detection of semen, of course, we can use microscopic exam, no? So uh, usually, mas basi na submit of vaginal fluid, vaginal secretions, urine of a patient, pwede pwede, uh, which is suspected of having, no? Um, your, uh, ni? your, suspected of having uh, or suspected of being sexually abused all right so you can perform micro microscopic exam you can add saline all right to enhance uh, the uh, results and examine under face contrast microscopy motile sperms makitan siya after 24 hours uh, of intercourse non motile sp sperm it can exist after it can persist for 3 days and even um, if mamatay na lang siya mabilin gapo ng head even after seven days of intercourse. Okay, so seven days after intercourse, um, heads na lang mabilin pero makita na gapon siya. Okay, so that's for mga time duration or mga duration kung unsay mga makita na sa vaginal fluid or sa urine. Okay, or even other, uh, not only from females but also from males na na sexually abused. Okay, so possible po. All right. Now, two, again, as mentioned, fluorescence under UV light. That's because of flavin, di ba? Green white uh, fluorescence. ACP determination, very important uh, because acid phosphatase is seen in prostate. And your ACP can be seen in clothes or pwede siyang positive even sa clothes, sa mga, clo uh, sa mga linen, no? sa inana. Not only in, uh, not only in uh, mga vaginal fluid but also in the clothing and all that. So it can be used for testing. Okay? And um, even in the absence of sperm, mo positive ragyo siya. So in the, the presence of ACP, 
um, in your clothing, in the vaginal fluid, or on someone a fluid suspected of uh, suspected coming from a sexual abuse case, then that's positive for the presence of semen. All right. Now, the more specific is your PSA, prostate specific antigen, or also as a glycoprotein 30. All right. Uh, it's present again, parehas ni ACP, even in the absence of sperm. I can to siya, present in the absence of sperm. So it's more specific and very, uh, ano good, very. Uh, indicative of the presence of, of semen, especially in cases of sexual abuse. All right. Now, mga chemical tests, dears, you can perform the Florence test, which is not specific. It measures choline, all right, and say reagents, iodine crystals, and potassium iodide. What is a positive result? The presence of a dark brown or dark brown rhombic crystals. For number six, you have the Barbieros test, okay, which is the more specific because it tests spermine. And on say uh, reagents, Saturated picric acid and trichloroacetic acid. What is the expected result? Yellow leaf like crystal. So take note of that, dear sa mga Florence Barbieros. Okay, common question din uh, sa mga exams. So take note. Uh, Florence is for choline. So FC, Florence, choline. All right. Iodine crystals and potassium iodide, dark brown, rhombic crystals. Barbieros, BS, no, for spermine. Saturated picric and trichloroacetic. And on say positive niya, uh, yellow leaf like crystals. So Barbiero, di ba, Barbiero? No, so mga tig alot o buhok. Okay? So therefore, ang um, imuhang appearance kay Mura Pudsag, uh, leaf. Huh? Huh? Ano siya connection? <laughs> Nangita ko connection, pero barbero. Barbero, di ba? Barbero. So um, tig, tig alot. Alright? So, Ha? Huh? Asa ko padulong? Wala ko kasabot. <laughs> but anyway, ano ito akong gishare? Wala ko kasabot po, dears. But anyway, ayan. So, um, Spermine, ha, spermine, yeah. Uh, basta barbero lang, ako remember kay tig alot og buhok, alright? So possible na iyahang pag-alot kay leaf-like, eh, na na lang siguro, okay? So leaf-like leaf na siya, dear, sa dili, leaf-life, sorry. Leaf-like crystals, okay? Pasensya, nalibo ko sa akong mnemonics. <laughs> okay, alright, sige. Now, other methods, of course, ABO, blood grouping, and of course, DNA analysis. Okay, alright, ayan. Ah, okay, very good. Okay. Uh, barbers tig trim ang leaves dapat i-trim. Yes. Pwede, pwede. Thank you, thank you. Itima. Merilin, ano mo na itim ang dahon? Mer? Guba na na dahon, Mer. Ibang dahon yata yan. So, barbiero, tama. So, i-trim ang mga leaves. Ayan, sige. Barbiero, leaf-like. Okay? Sige, thank you for that, Kyla. So, barbiero, leaf-like, i-trim ang mga barbero tig trim og hair, but this time yung i-trim ang leaf. Okay? So, yellow leaf-like. Crystals. Uh, Do Dorothy, yes, um, I'm not sure kung unsa, wala ko ka ano pa sa principles sa test kit sa rape. Um, I'll, I'll read about it. Pero most likely, yes, it follows this or um, it uses immuno, immuno, if kits siya immunochromatographic kit, so basin detecting PSA, all right, or other, um, or ACP ba. But yeah, it could be. Okay, I'll read about it. Wala ko kabasa about sa mga rape test kits, but I will, I will. So, most likely it follows this principle, pero immunochromatographic siya, okay, kay test kits man siya. But maybe it's detecting still the same, your PSA or ACP. I'm still, uh, I'll read about it. Okay? All right, sige. Now, uh, some terminologies lang, dears. So, that's for the medical legal test. Again, dears, ha, I already am uh, not really warning, but Introducing you to the idea that you can receive samples for that, okay, from cases of sexual abuse in the laboratory, and it's very common. And as I mentioned, uh, please uh, take it uh, respectfully, open-minded lang yun, okay, and do not judge uh, this, especially the victim, my God, my God, no, okay, so uh, please process it accurately. And respectfully lang yun. Okay? With respect to the victim. Okay? And ayaw po siya i-chika yun. Huwi, my gosh. Ako yung na, na process na eme. Ganun. So, um, it's very sad. It's really happening, no? Um, it's really happening. It's really sad. So, ayun. Okay. All right. So, uh, ABO blood grouping and of course, DNA analysis. Okay. So, um, siguro mo share na lang po ko. Um, with consent man po ni siya sa, sa patient. Pero friend din ako, nag, nag med tech siya. Uh, freestanding laboratory, I think. Tapos, nagpresa sa urine. And the urine came from a child, female child, around mga six years old, seven. And then, paglanto niya sa urine, nakita niya kay uh, motile sperms. Imagine? Then, yung sa itong dimension gani, basta gani makakita tag motile sperm sa ihi pag yun. It means, it just happened very recently. Okay, remember that your sperm cannot live in a long time sa urine because urine is not conducive for sperm. And that's what happened. 
So pag lento na kwarto ko na shocks uya sa bata. Okay? Kay it really happened. No, very very recently lang yud. Kay ang nakita yud sa yahang urine is motile sperms. Okay? And if it happened over a long time yud or pila ka hours, then the sperm should have not been motile already. Namantay na dapat. Kay mga pila ka hours, mga mga siguro mga one hour ka pin ang imuhang viability sa sperm sa urine. So that was really sad, no? So pag lang ako na shocks, my god. And most of these cases mag would happen there's trigger warning gapo na uh, uh disclaimer lang, this happens within the family. Okay? Imagine six years old or bata, how can she get that? As a man, so of course, it happens siya within the household. Sa yarang kuyo. Ah, my god, I don't like to think about it. Samo kaayo. Ah, samo ka ni mga Lucky daw yung putla ng mga... Mm, nako. Anyway, ayan, sige. So that, that's the sad reality. And ako rang point is, you can experience that. You can uh, experience receiving, ha? Not, ano, pasensya. Uh, that's not what I mean. Experience uh, receiving specimens, okay? Uh, for that. So, ano lang. Be prepared. And as I mentioned, uh, ano lang yun. Kalma lang, no? Treat it with respect. Okay? All right, sige. Very sad. Okay, all right, sige. Now we go now to just uh, additional tests na lang, um, or, um, mga terminologies, ah, joke, sorry. For post vasectomy, the ideas. Okay, so another reason why we perform semen analysis is we want to determine the successfulness of vasectomy. Okay, all right. Okay, ah, sige, I'll say answer. In, in such cases, of course, there's, um, as an intern, uh, of course, the section head or ang RMT dito, sila yun ang. Mudawat ana. So they're aware of such cases para asa ana, para asa ni. So um, ikaw pwede ka mo process, pero before that pagyod, then you are aware. Um, uh, the 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 medtechs of the section are already aware kung sa nahitabo. But if ikaw medtech na ka nagprocess, of course you have to inform, no? You have to inform the head. Um, siguro if nagpatest ang patient of ano for random lang, and then nakain nakita ana, then you have to inform siguro the head. And then, pwede niyo masudyaan po ang, ang parent. Okay? Um, katung akong example, dears, ang chief complaint daw sa bata, kung sa daw ingon, sakit iya ang puson. Imagine, yeah, six years old siya. So therefore, sakit iya ang puson is because, because siguro of, of um, forceful entry into her organ. Okay? So, it's really Saturday, my God, <laughs> to, 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 to realize that. Okay? That's the chief complaint of the of the child. And I think that's the reason why nagpa-urinalysis sila and then mo'y na-determine. So, I'm not sure kung sige buhat sa ako ang friend pero I'm, I think iyang gi-inform ang head okay, uh, about it. So, again, also there's um, when we deal with such cases uh, the first thing that we can think about mag-okay, nanong karun pa? Diba, inana? Or like, it's, it has been going on for pila ka years or pila ka days. Nanong karun pa mo? mo do all. So, inana mag ang mindset. No? But please remember, dears, na dili sa yun if you are in the position of the victim to to come clean or to come forward sa nahitabo. Okay? The trauma, the fear of what happened, it's not, dili siya lalim. So, you cannot say na nganong karun pa. Okay? Um, instead of saying nganong karun pa, at least imong ingnon na, at imong ingnon na, um, uh, imong ingnon, instead of nganong karun pa, um, that's imong ingnon, that's good na ni come forward na nagyud mo even after some time. Okay, because remember again, as I mentioned, majority of the cases happen within the household. And, you know, there are a lot of factors, culture na to, like what will other people say? What is our reputation? Mga inana and all that, diba? So, daghan pa mga inana na factors. So, that's why some people will try to, will dili kay mo come forward da yun. So, I hope kita, no, we're really living in the progressive world. I hope ato ang pag-treat ani na mga cases very ano po, ha, kanang very progressive. So, when we receive such cases and makabalot na nadugay na rin na hitabo, let's change our mindsets, no? Na dili, dili tamo yung na, anong karun pa? Nadugay man na hitabo. Anong karun pa mumu, ano? Na daga na kayong abuses na hitabo. Put yourself in the shoes of the victim, okay? And we should not always victim blame. Dili ko tamo victim blame kaya dili na yung sala, okay? Alright? And it's not easy to come forward, to come clean. Um, considering all the trauma, all the um, fear na yahang experience from that. Okay? So I hope, I hope ha, ma-instill na nato, dears, um, especially that it happens in reality. Okay? All right. So yeah, that's a very heavy conversation. Okay? All right. So, whew, all right. So, uh, trigger warning muna. Okay? But I hope ma-instill na nato, dears, ha? Ma-instill gina nato. Okay? All right. So, 
Uh, yeah, so if you receive such specimens, dears, again, most likely nakabalo na yun ang head, Annie, kung paraasan niya siya na test. Uh, but again, if ikaw, ang um, medtech, then of course, uh, inform mga kailangan uh, na inform. So if ang parent, if makaya ni mo, um, inform siya na mamo niya ako nakita. Um, please, ka nang try your best to to uh, address this. Okay? All right? Um, and all that. Okay, Lisod Manggod, uh, imagine, um, ikaw, parent, no? Nga makabalo ka na yung anak na ikig-abuse po sa imuhang sa il let's say sa imuhang own husband gud or sa imuhang igsuon ba na laki again trigger warning and then makabalo ka na so of course you'll feel in denial and maglago tug ka no and then of course if if wala ay proof sayo na kayo mo deny sayo na kayo sa ibali wala no so if kana na nay proof gud example nagpa UA or most uh, uh, mas important pa gud nagpa PSA or ACP um then mas 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 ano gud siya mas solid na okay all right so Whew, again, that's reality, dears. It happens and it's sad. Sana naman, matapos na itong mga, mga horny ng mga utok kay puno rag ah, sa mukha eh. Ay, nako. Ang, ang iyahang notch nasa utok. Muna ron, mga gipagana ang, ut- ang, ang notch kaysa sa brain. Ay, nako. Ay, nako. Okay, alright. Anyway, I had so we'll talk about uh, next the vasectomy, the other reason why we perform semen analysis. No, So again, as I mentioned, vasectomy, that's another way of birth control. As I mentioned, sa sugod pa lang, why do we keep on pressuring women to take birth control? Unless na lang if, again, the women exhibit or experience are experiencing um, because no there are some disorders in the female reproductive tract or reproductive system that kailangan of birth control and that's okay okay such as uh, picos pero in terms of kanang controlling ano mga females good no birth control na pwede man ang males we have vasectomy okay so why put the pressure on females that that males the, na, na ang males pwede man perform ani okay so the vasectomy purpose aninia is again uh, cutting of the vas deferens so that the ejaculate will not contain any sperm cell and the only concern is the presence or absence of sperm. And it should be done two months after vasectomy and continued until two consecutive monthly specimens that show no sperm. Now, another very important characteristic to take note, dears, is not just the presence or uh, the absence. The importance is motile ba or emotile? Because after vasectomy, the presence of mga emotile sperms can be normal. Pero kung motile gani siya, bahalag usapan na lang, bahalag usapan lang na, okay? Then that indicates a uh, failure of vasectomy. Okay? Nadya po chance na ma-pregnant ang woman for birth control purposes. Okay? Alright. So we look at the motility gear. Not only in the presence or absence gear, pero if motile pa bagod siya or dili. Okay? So that's another important karakter. So, ako personally, dear Samo, share ko. <laughs> Nag-chika na yun. Alright. Ako, I don't see myself pa, as of now, um, bearing and rearing, rearing a child. It's I don't see it in the future. It's not part of my plans then. Uh, when you reach, when you become, you know, after graduating, muna na yung mga think bitaw. <laughs> Dili na about exams. Yung mga ma-think na kayo about problems sa life, yung mga financial eme, asa man mo, jud, asa mo padulo, mga ex- existential crisis. Apil na yun ka ng murag um, uh, rearing a child. Okay? So if ka muna may plans to bear a child, go. Okay, ragyod. But for me, ako, dili pag yun. I don't see myself and I'm scared. <laughs> uh, and gasto, oh my God, gasto kayo mag, uh, magpanganak. Okay? So ako yung advice, dears, if ever magani, you have plans on getting married and having a family, make sure that before you start uh, making or building a family, you are financially secured and you're financially safe and you are really prepared. Okay? Ayaw mong sulundog marriage. Ayaw mong pangapanganak kung dili pa mo ready sa tanang aspect, especially financially. Because your children are not your retirement plans. And that's a toxic culture in the Philippine family. Okay? Ako mismo, na-experience na ako na. Okay? And I don't want... Uh, the future generation to experience that, dears. Okay, so come on. I'm sure na mga plano here na mag family. Make sure, good, ha? Na take note, ha? Remind yourself that it's your decision to bear a child. It's not the child's decision to be born here in this world. It's your decision. Okay, and remember that you're building when you are um, you are birthing a new person that may or may not be different from all the ideals that you had, all the um, traditions that you had. So you have to be prepared if lahi bagyud siya sa imuhang be expect or sa imuhang nakagisnan, and that's okay and that should be normal because that's a person that's a different person. And again, I, I highly emphasize this, dears. Kaya muna ako mga maawis karon sa life. It's not the child's decision to be born in this world. It's your decision, okay? And it's not the child's responsibility, okay, to pay back for all the things that you did. If mo pay back siya, then that's good. Because if it's out of his or her um, 
nature na mo give back then okay pero if kana mo pressure na na kana mo require na gud na mo bayad ka na ako, my god that's a red flag you should never you should not have been a parent in the first place okay or even na strong ko that's my maoy's in life as in promise daghan kay ko mga nana dears uh, as in um um yeah muna siya nature uh, sa toxic yun siya and um toxic yun kayo siya daming nakarelate ako mismo dears promise i tell you promise um it's it's really it's really part of the toxic culture in the in the in the philippines no like now ako ako, ako ang <laughs> unya lang ta mag chika if maka graduate na mo pero ako feeling now now kay murag i cannot enjoy because i'm still bounded by responsibilities i never asked for in the first place oh di ba grabe <laughs> grabe to siya i am bounded by the responsibilities i never asked for first in the first place. i never asked for in the first place Ayan. So, take note of that. Ha? So, if you have plans to be um, parents in the future, please consider. Ha? Please consider, good. are we financially ready? Are we ready to accept children that are, especially if LGBTQ ba siya? Okay ra ba na to? You, you have to talk to that with your partner. That's why ako, personally, I am for... Um, of course na uban na dili mo so good pero ako okay ra ko na mag ano sila like ang couple mag live in sila before marriage because at least kabalo sila how they are together when they are in the same house and under the same roof again you may you may you may have different different views from me pero ako amo na siya if ako magani magkasal ko i would have wanted na mag mag live in me before me ikasal because at least i know kung unsa gyud me if magkuyog. Kay majority magod sa atong culture kay dili pwedeng live in kay PMS and all that. Pero pag abot na sa kasal, dito na may bala na. Ay okay kanidi siya na siya, ibastasa na in ani. Of course, in the first place, in the first part sa inyong marriage, sa courting, honeymoon stage, ang ipakita gyud sa imong bana or sa imong mga uyab is the good side. Okay, but of course, ma ma accept siya. Pero once everything's done, once all of those um beautiful and sweet and honeymoon stage subsides, asa naman? Will you stay? Will you choose to stay? Yeah. Love is all about choosing to stay every day, no? <laughs> Despite all of that. Okay? And again, of course, that's why that's why that's my mantra na if ever magani mo mag uh, magpaka family ko, I I would want na mag mag live sa me together before marriage so that I will know na if sana bagyo, okay ra ba ko sa batasan if kami lang duha? Kaya ra ba nako? Ma tolerate ra ba nako inan? Okay, so <laughs> so ilan niya itong mga chika, no? Pero yeah, that's that's my that's my motto. Again, I, I respect if dili mo mo sugot sa ako, dili mo mo agree. Okay, like good. I understand. Okay, but for me, that's my personal um opinion. Okay, all right. But again, general lang yun, dears, ha? Uh, do not, ayaw sa mo alang-alang. Okay, um, enjoy your youth. Ayaw sa mo alang, ano eh, panganak, na yung mga birth controls. If ganaan yun mo mag, ano, then go, have some birth controls and uh, be careful lang. Okay, basta mura na akong Uh, mura na ako ang advice, okay? And akong gin-emphasize, okay? Um, <laughs> um, you have to, um, uh, you have to, ano dears, ako, ako, I'm hopeful for our generation because we are, we are learning a lot from all the toxicity and the negativities that um, we have experienced from the culture that we have. So I have hope, high hopes atong generation that the future families that we will build are much more progressive and positive, more loving, more caring for all the children that we may have or we may bore in the future. Because uh, I think we are the hope Nagyod, to end the generational curse of poverty, of toxicity, of this um, you know, toxic Filipino mindset. So I'm really hopeful. Uh, for our generation, especially for those na mo bear of family. Okay? So, <laughs> ayun. So, I hope na gets nyo yan, ha? So, sa ato ng general, kasi since we're talking about din naman conceiving a child being a family, boring a, bearing a family. So, uh, that's the realities, dears. Uh, Lisod kayo. Thankful, uh, blessed yun ang mga children na ilahang parents kay very, ano, like, so far, uh, dili, dili mag-expect yun ng anything. And then, mo respect yun na they really thought well about it ba? before uh, before coming into marriage and before really like, you know, <laughs> di ba nag-share na ako mga, ako mga hinanakit sa life. So, ako na nag-share kung hindi na ako teacher po. If magkita na ta, mag-chika ta, overshots, go ato na chikahan. Pero yeah, muna siya ako mga realities, uh, mga realizations, no? Never, never enter marriage or bearing a family if you're not ready. Okay? Now, let's say, oh, di ba, like na nag-chika, what if, Uh, na, napaburos ka or na, napaangkan ka. So what? 
Okay. So what, 'di ba? So it's not it's not a requirement na if mamaburos ka or mapangangkan ka, pakas nang juga. What if the dili good the ay mo work or something? Then it's not a that's not a necessity na magpakasal mo. All right? Um there are a lot of single mothers out there are heroes na kaya ra na wala ang fathers and we salute them and kaya ra Okay? So it's not a necessity na magpakasal para kay tungod lang na buros. Okay? All right. So mawala ang sanctity sa marriage. Okay? Mawala pud ang why there is marriage, diba? In terms of our faith, in terms of our religion and our beliefs, no? So um again, that's my personal lang ha. Na itay differing views, okay ra Okay? So that's my <laughs> chika. Okay? General lang your dear's bottom line, ayog sulod og di pa ka ready. Okay? <laughs> Ayan. Especially when when bearing a family. Take note here, someone na yung, like ako at this age, mayon na sulito na. They know man na like um wala pa ko uyab so like asas lang na. Kano sa mga magbinyo ay na dito. Kano sa mga mga mag mag panganak na kana kana ng mag thought na magulang na yung parents like wala pa sila makita na po so ako mag so what? <laughs> Nana balik. Ako sa lang inon sa so, mga dayon. Nana ganiya pong reaction na mga wala pa ko'y plano ana kaya akong plano magpadato okay that's my go because money is life it is what it is <laughs> and what about it because yes no so <laughs> that's my goal no and if na nati anak dears dili na taka pala mi girl dili na taka laag mo ato pa ko Korea mo ato pa ko Greece mo ato pa ko ni Jungkook sa Chinese <laughs> Ato ba ko sa Korea? Ang sa na lang na, if na ako'y anak, huwag dala ko dito, magguyod na ako bata. But again, that's my personal ano ha. By, because maybe some of you would have would want to settle down na after some years. For me, dili pa. Dili pa yun. Okay, at this age, no. But I don't know, maybe in the future, makarealize ko na, kapoy naman di ay og ano ra, kanang fun fun or ano, ganan ako mo settle down. Basin in the future, when I become more, when I become older. Okay? <laughs> But for now, girl, padato ta girl, oy my God, that's, Okay, money is everything. <laughs> yes, rich Tito. Money can buy us happiness. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. As it should. And what about it? Ano man di ay? Kung si Junko kong mabana, dears, wala na. Karo na dayon. Agad, agad. Let's do this. Mahawa na ko ICLS. <laughs> Dili na ko matrabaho. Diretso na ako. <laughs> Joke lang with Tabias. Yes. Mga alipin ng kapitalismo. That's true. That's sad, no? And what uh, and what I am if not exploited? Yes, Olivia Rodrigo. <laughs> No, I can relate to you. <laughs> But sige lang, wala tayo choice kay Pubri Manta. No? So, muna siya, dears, I'm really hopeful no, when sometimes mag-think ko sa gabi before ko matulog na murag, wow, this this generation talaga, but while looking at you, like, maremember ko sa inyo hang, like, example, inyong mga posts or sa inyong mga tweets, um, o sa hype maglantaw ko, makain ko na, wow, the generation talaga to come is really much more hopeful and much more positive and caring and loving uh, compared to the boomers during the katong karaan. So I'm really hopeful, Gyud, sa itong generation. Uh, I think we're going to end a lot. We're going to end, Gyud, a lot of generational curses and generational problems that have been going on and on because of a cycle that was never ended ended and never initiated to be ended by our family members. Kaya natakot sila, ikapoy sila, mahadlok sila na mo fight against. Now I hope that's a reminder ha, especially in the coming elections that we have to vote for the right people. Okay? Okay. Alam nyo na yan. Alright. Sige. Dami natin chika, no? Pero yes, muna siya dear sa akong mga hinanakit sa life. So, chika pa taani more when muna ako sa ICLS. Kita rata sa ano, Cebu. Charo, chaka lang. Okay. Now, terminologies, um, azospermia, it means wala dyo ejaculate. Wala kayo makuha na ejaculate. Azospermia, na kayo fluid pero gamay mo hang uh, semen. Or wala sperm cells. Ayan. Necrospermia, emotile or dead na sperm cells. And oligospermia, decreased ang sperm concentration. So mga terminologies lang. Okay. <laughs> Now, normal values, dears, as you can see. Di summarize na ako. Tabular. Ayan. Assessment of sperm cells. Of course, morphology. You make a smear. Stain it with Papa Nicolaus. Viability. Stain with Eosin nigrosine. Sperm count. Chilled tap water. Again, what's the purpose of the diluent? To immobilize your sperms. Take note of that. Sperm motility, again, place a drop of semen and place it with a cover slip. And then abnormal testing or mga additional testing, as you can see, if decreased ang motility, pero normal ang count, possible na na problema sa viability. Meaning, daghan ang dead cells. Okay, kay decrease man ang motility, pero daghan nagyapon ang sperm cells. Pero daghan nila, wala galiho. So possible na daghang patay na cells. So test ni mo is eosin, negrosin. Decreased count, abnormal result could be lack of seminal vesicle. So you test for fructose. Decreased motility with clumping, possibly male anti-sperm anti antibodies. Meaning sa sperm pa lang daan or sa semen sample, na nai-clumping of sperm. 
So meaning na nai antibody sulod daan sa semen. So nakuha siya sa male, male anti-sperm antibody. So your test makes agglutination reaction, immunobid, and sperm agglutination with male zero. Pero kung abnormal result mo kay normal ra ang semen, pero naja po yung infertility, then possible female anti-sperm antibodies. Meaning, sa cervical mucosa pa lang daan sa mong females na nai antibodies against the sperm. All right? And that can already kill the sperm. That's why nai infertility. Okay? All right. So, I hope na-gets lang ang difference sa male anti-sperm ha. Decrease motility with clumping sa semen sample pa lang daan. So meaning, ang semen sample na nai-antibodies daan, produced by the male, okay? Kaya na may clumping na nakitaan niya, decrease motility, alright? Whereas, normal analysis, normal ra ang, ang sperm results, ang semen analysis, pero na-adjap po infertility, possibly na ang female ang nag-produce ng antibodies against the sperm. Sa cervical mucosa pa lang daan, pag-produce sa sperm dito or pag-add sa sperm, ni atake ng antibody sa female. All right? Okay. And the last slide, you have the sperm function tests. This is usually performed sa mga laboratories na nag-cater IVF, no? Intrauterine na mga fertilization, uh, IVF, um, and also mga andrology laboratories. So we determine the function of your sperm, especially in their penetration ability. Because uh, some physicians actually, they think na ang penetration abilities of your sperm is the more important, yun, the most important na karakteristik. Okay? If ever, okay ang motility, okay ragya po ng morphology, pero iyahang ability to penetrate, no, nako, <laughs> yung ability to penetrate kay dili maayo, then of course, um, then that could that could uh, lead to infertility. No, sakit yun ang penetration. Charot, check lang. Ibang penetration pala yun. <laughs> okay. So important yun ang penetration. All right? Okay. So another one here is hamster egg penetration. So you incubate your sperms with hamster eggs and then you detect kung makapenetrate ba siya sa mukhang egg. Cervical mucus penetration, we detect the ability of the sperm to swim, no? Or penetrate the mucus to overcome the cervical mucus. All right? Hypoosmotic swelling, ato i-expose ang sperm in low osmotic or sodium concentration to evaluate membrane integrity and sperm viability. And lastly, in vitro acrosome reaction. Evaluation of the acrosome to produce enzyme essential for uh, ovum penetration. So it's more, uh, all these sperm function tests, it's more on the ability of the sperm to penetrate, especially the ovum. All right? Okay. And that's the end of sperm analysis. For the remaining time, there's ato lang sugdan gamay ang fecalysis. All right? Para tomorrow, medyo gamay lang ato ang i-discuss. Okay? Kay taas-taas po tong fecalysis. All right? So that's the end of your sperm analysis. Um, any questions, dears, before uh, we proceed lang to the remaining sa fecalysis? So, pasensya medyo <laughs> na serious atong conversation. No? But these are conversations that need to be done even though it's difficult. All right? Um, wala ang tersa. Mga ano na ako na siya, dears, mga, mga hinanakit sa life. <laughs> Dengan kong hinanakit sa life. Shout out. Beta. Mga realizations. Hi. Shout out. Check lang. <laughs> Noon saan naman ka, Mark? Existential crisis at this <laughs> during a lecture. <laughs> Yes, we should. Okay? All right. Kimo na daw podcast. Okay. I will, I will. All right. Charat po hon, chokla. Yes, time to break the cycle. Okay? All right. Time to break the cycle. We should break the cycle. So, kamo dears, ha? Like, I'm not saying that you should, like, Murag, uh, you should sow hatreds in your parents. No, that's not that's not my point. Okay? That's not my point. I love my parents. For another three times na, makrealize po na, Murag, what could have been and what should have been na nagani. Um, wala lang. And Marag, I'm not sure if I'm a only child, but I'm an only child. Ko. So Marag, uh, the, the burden is much more, it's higher on me uh, compared to, um, to if you have a so family. Ka imagine if, like, example, lang, ha, like, you know, buyag simba ko na yung mahitabo sa mga parents. So like, kinsa may, kinsa may, kinsa may akong kasaligan, it's only me. <laughs> Kaya ako na may, ako na, no? Unlike if you have a child, so Marag, na kayo pwedeng mapasahan gani sa burden. So Marag, Pwede, na, pwede nyo ma-share ang burden ba? But if ikaw rin usa, mura mag everything's on you. So mura like, it's so challenging. So muna siya, dears, ako mga maoy sa life. So yung makakita mo, maoy po sa IG, it's not because of a lucky, my God. I'm so over that. <laughs> it's more on my life na yun. So pasensya, sa mga nag-follow na ako sa IG, no? <laughs> And sa Twitter, if makakita mo si Kung Maoy, it's because of that. <laughs> it's not because gibulagan ko, bahala na mo. As I mentioned, di ba, sa una, okay lagi ko mag-maoy about Ekal or like uh, a failed relationship. I know that there's an end to the pain uh, or there's an end to the maoy. But when it comes to uh, kanya ko mga hinanakit and mga, uh, mga disappointments in life, it can keep on repeating and repeating and repeating. Even if at times, it's like, yes, at this hour, 
<laughs> alas tres, alas tres, alas cuatro, mo, it, it will hit you ba? out of nowhere. No? Halabitaw, no? And then, it can affect the whole day na good for you. Or as for your, for, for mga free relationships, mga kabalo, mga kabalo, ah, okay, sige, umanam me, then, mawaya na ako ni for pila ka, ano ra, then, I'll be okay. Kaya, makakita ako glangin. May nga na gani, so, <sighs> okay, anyway, <laughs> so, kailangan ni siya kalino mga chikas, kailangan ni siya, oh, ano, money, chano, <laughs> Checka lang. Joke, joke. Ako ba rin gi-record ba sinya ano ko? Anyway. <laughs> so, remaining time na lang, dears, for ano lang, for fecalis is pasensya ha, medyo na-emotional si Ox. Medyo may mga pinagdadaanan din, pero kaya naman. Okay. So, um, for the third or for the, for tomorrow, before tamo, ano, um, for tomorrow, di ba? Um, for tomorrow, dear, dears, um, I think I will have to Um, kung kanang kato ang ganahan mo join, if gamayra ang ganahan mo join sa morning na kuya 10 to 12 na ipadayo ni siya na lecture, and then pagkahapon siguro mag 2 to 6 rata or 2 to or 1 to 6, depende ra. Kaya kulangan yung tag time. No? So, ato rin kung sa itong fluid mahuman. Pasensya, marami. Dugay mo kita makastar kaya ganang chika. Pero I hope even the learnings that you had in this topic sa CM or sa academic, katoto ako mga na-share po na life advice or whatever, you also learn from that. Okay? Okay. At least, you will develop, you will be molded not only as competent medics but also as competent citizens. All right? And individuals. Okay? And that's our goal as a teacher. All right? Na even outside the classroom, all right, na mo'y ma-apply in real life. Okay? All right. So, <laughs> pasensya, medyo nadugay gita, no? Uh, but marami tayong mga pinagradaanan sa life. So, charot. May ganin na pa ko yung Smirnoff. Diri, chachok lang. Chaka na. So, alam nyo na tonight, <laughs> I will drown in <laughs> my misery. Charo, chaka lang. All right. So, again, for this, dears, this is, I think, the one of the next major parameters in yung TOS sa compre, which is fecalysis. So, for fecalysis in this part, uh, since we have talked about fecalysis good sa para, because it's the main sample nato for para, no? What we're focusing here is more on a little microscopic, but we're not detecting parasites because this is CM. So we're, talk, we're talking more about the chemical part of fecalysis and microscopic gamay, which could indicate disease. All right? So again, this is fecalysis. So this is a presentation uh, made by, of course, my Lodi and the queen of body fluids, si um, Madam uh, Bernal, yes, yeah, si Mambi, and uh, si Sir Jemu, my, my idol. All right? So these are presentations or slides coming from their uh, PowerPoint. So ako na siyang incorporate o ginagmay ng mga additional information. All right? So, fecalysis, uh, significance, why do we perform fecalysis, all right? So, I think wala pa may notes, Ani, no? Pero naay ka, Sir Errol, na notes. I will also upload this once we're done. I will upload this tonight, yeah, okay? So, fecalysis, of course, the significance, why we perform fecalysis, majority or the main function, or the main purpose is for parasitism, di ba? That's why your CM and para, they're all fused into one section in the laboratory because they can detect the same thing, no? So, for um, for for fecalysis, majority good of the reasons why we perform is for parasitism. Another is, of course, malfunctions of the GI tract, no? Liver and also pancreas. Remember that um, your GI tract, all right, or your stool can be a an indicator of what's happening inside, especially in your GI tract, okay? Uh, GI bleeding, very important also. And steatorrhea, amelorrhea, and of course, inflammation. Now, we define these terms, of course. You have number one, hematochesia, all right? When you say hematochesia, sige silang ga, kiss, charo, chakala. Hematochesia is the presence of bright blood. Ayan, bright blood, bright red color, bloody stool, in uh, bloody stool, all right? And it indicates lower GI bleeding. So, nga naman siyang red kay fresh pang blood. Nasa sa lower GI tract, okay? In comparison, you have melina, right? Melina is black tarry stool, all right? Dark colored stool because of bleeding inside the upper GI tract. So, nga naman siyang ni black because the blood from the upper GI tract, it was uh, degraded into hematin, okay? Hematin. Um, as it, it it passes along the remaining parts of the GI tract. That's why it's colored black, okay? So again, dark colored stool or black tarry stool, that's melina. Next, you have occult blood. Ayan, the very important chemical analysis test for feces, your occult blood. Occult, nasa pangalan na hidden. So this is a bleeding na dili siya apparent or dili siya claro macroscopically. There is bleeding inside, pero it's still in amounts or nasa sa volume na dili pa maklaro in your stool. Okay? Alright. Next, you have amelorrhea, the presence of increased starch in stool and steatorrhea, of course, increased uh, fats or lipids in stool. Alright? Now, sa itong term na to, wala na ko nabutang diri, uh, for increased undigested muscle fibers in your stool, you have, ano sa to? Ano sa to? Okay. Muna yung mga nang chat na. You have kriya, 
Toria. Take note. How do you remember? Creatoria, uh, creatinine. Okay? Creatinine. So, parang uh, nasa yung ano, uh, para ma-remember ninyo, creatinine, di ba? Muscle. So, increase muscle fibers, creatoria. Yes, for all sections tomorrow, if free ramo. Again, um, It's not required ha, dira ko mag-attendance because tomorrow is a holiday. So if kinahan mo mag-chill, it's up to you. You know, remember that rest dears, it's a it's not a reward but it's a necessity. Okay? That's what we keep on forgetting especially me, no? <laughs> rest is a necessity, not a reward. Okay? All right. So if you want to rest tomorrow in preparation sa company, okay ragyot. Basta I'll just lecture sa katong mga ganahan. So mag-zoom ra gyapon ko in case mo daghan. Um, and um, I'll just upload it, tam pre-record it. Para at least ako na yung goal kay mahuman na to tanang lectures this week. Para next week din ako magpakita. <laughs> Charot siya ka lang. Okay? Alright, sige. But again, we'll discuss uh, towards the end years ato i-discuss inyo ang mga board exam, mga internship questions para makashare po ko sa akong uh, experiences baka makatulong. Alright? Okay. So, uh, those are the terminologies. Okay? So, take note of that. Alright. Now, for fecalysis, again, we have, it's actually divided into two types. Of course, you have the routine uh, fecalysis and the chemical fecalysis. So for routine fecalysis, usually this is needed for para, no? Macroscopic, microscopic, and usually for the goal of detecting parasites, uh, which atungi, most of our did didactics was devoted good for para. Okay, yun ang ikalintan. My gosh, the audacity, the opacity. Charap, check ka lang. Wait, ma remember na ninyo puhon. Okay? Kailangan dyan na siya repetition. Okay? Next, of course, is the chemical analysis, which is um, where, what we are more looking into there is a clinical microscopy. Okay, so we're talking about detecting mga chemical substances as tool. All right. Okay, now what is the composition of your feces? Of course, your feces is composed of a lot of materials, no? But majority is composed of undigested, undigested food stuff, especially mga cellulose or fiber. Why? Because we don't have enzymes, no, inside our body that can di that, that can digest these uh, mga mga components. So therefore, they are excreted as feces. Aside from that, of course, uh, slough, uh, slough, 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 sloughed, 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 sloughed intestinal epithelium. All right. So mga old cells, no? Bacteria, of course, GI secretions, digestive enzymes, all right? Bile pigments, electrolytes, and also water. Take note, around 100 to 200 grams of stool is passed per day and majority is composed of water. 75% and 25% solids. Now, take note, um, about 9,000 ml good, no, of fluid and all that will pass You can sa stomach pa dun sa small intestine. 9,000, 9 liters ha. Pero about mga 100 to 150 ml lang yun ang ma-absorb <laughs> uh, sa, sa large intestine. All right? Or uh, about 100 to 150 ml ba to ang ma-dispose sa feces. Chakto ba ko mga values? Baka gajama-jama na lang ko din. <laughs> Pasaga na lang ko chika. Okay. Um, uh, tasa. Wait, wait, tasa na to. Ayun, Okay. Uh, so again, pwedeng 9,000 ml. Uh, 9,000 ml ang pwedeng maabot, no? Pero again, um, little ra. Little the amounts lang yun ato ang maabsorb. And then the remaining are uh, secreted or excreted in the feces. And for the large intestine, no, it has only a threshold of 3,000 ml, 3 liters, no? Of water na pwede niyang ma-hold. Ma More than that, okay, Of course, if musubra nag 3,000 ml, dito na siya magpagawas and that is in the form of diarrhea. Okay? So, we'll talk about diarrhea na tomorrow. Okay? All right. Sige. <sighs> okay. Now, we go na to the types of specimen. Of course, you have the random specimen which is the most common any time of the day and you have also the timed specimen. So, for timed specimen, usually three-day stool sample, this is used for quantitative fecal testing. So, take note. And as siya butang sa mga paint cans, dears as in like sa kanang mga boysen gani or kanang mga metal da yun So, luod kayo na siya as in. Wala ba ko experience pero I'm not sure if gina-perform gaya po sa routine lab pero um, if i-perform siya, ibutang siya paint can and then of course, imong kwaong tanan, imong attach sa three days. And then imagine the smell of that and all and that's why it's also a precaution that when opening, dapat delete ni mo siya Hinahinayon mo siya opening kay because there could be, pwede siyang explode. Kaya nga naman, the buildup of gas inside. Remember that your stool contains bacteria and they will continue to metabolize. And of course, possible byproducts is the formation of gas. So therefore, kung imo siya ablihan da yun, pwede siyang explode. So hinahinay lang kay because of the gas buildup. So girl, imagine the smell. I'm, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to think about it. My God, three days of stool in a container na closed pa oh my god oh my god i just don't want to feel ako if makaprocess ko ani digyo ko di ko kakaon after <laughs> my god okay mga maligo ko ikatulog ka ikatulog ka beses my god anyway right, that's for time specimen three day ha para, para asa ganin na siya quantitative fecal testing so basta ganin ay question uh, which of the following tests requires 
a three day stool sample or a time specimen atong answer is quantitative fecal testing fecal fat testing quantitative fecal fat testing all right next for patient education of course we already know this instruct the patient tunga tunga lang sa tayong kwa as sir pili gyud ang tanang tubo ni <laughs> kita jud ko sa video ni ni Muni ani <laughs> pari jud kay ito siya uh, like na medtech daw siya nang giatag niya jud kay <laughs> asa na sa manister oi tanan na tubol na <laughs> funny joke as in years na pay mais gikan pa kag gulalo no something funny joke siya anyway ayan so instruct the patient well all right in pra- practice proper collection all right so tunga tunga lang sa tai all right um uh, or eh, dili dito tunga sa tai sa hi man dito <laughs> sorry piece uh, thumb sized stool and for liquid sample again about 10 ml <laughs> All right, sige. Um, and of course, for proper collection, if uh, improper mong, mong collection, of course, it can lead to erroneous results. Now, for specimen container, alam nyo na yan, clean and dry, wide mouth, leak-proof, tight-fitting lids. But if night culture, of course, the best ang sterile. But generally, di na kailangan na sterile siya kaya, of course, your stool contains a lot of bacteria. All right, for label, alam nyo na, yes, patient's name, ID number, date and time collection, and physician's name. But again, depende siya sa imuhang uh, lab protocols. Basta make sure lang that the information on the label coincides with the information same request form. All right. Now for specimen collection again amount routine fecalysis as mentioned formed is 5 to 7 grams. Watery is 10 ml or uh, 10 cm uh, cm cube. Can remember pa sa para kung sa ganin na consistency of stool makitan both ang trophozoites and cysts of your um, of your protozoa. Kung sa na consistency oh. Oh, very good soft. Don't forget dear sa that's a recall from the board exam, uh, January 2021. Okay? And March 2021. All right, sige. And for chemical analysis, as mentioned, three days stool sample. So again, if I'm question, which of the following tests requires a three-day stool sample, you have quantitative fecal fat determination. Next, you have grants for specimen rejection, of course, specimens contaminated with urine, tissue, toilet water, soil, and water, improperly labeled, and old specimens. We already know that. Uh, rationally na to, very uh, self-explanatory na. Okay? All right, sige. Next, for specimen handling, sa <laughs> para uh, the processing and examination should be within two hours. And if greater than two hours, gani or nai delay, then refrigeration or preservation may happen. And again, these are the possible preservation. Refrigeration ang pinaka common. Okay? All right, ayan, sige. So, na discuss na natin ni sa para. Okay, sana na remember pa. Kisa ganitong e, uh, kisa tong eco friendly fixative, your PVA. Okay. PVA. PVA. Your EcoFix PVA. Galing. Very good. Okay. Now, for physical exam, of course, uh, macroscopic, it can already give you a presumptive identification or um, idea as to what is the possible disease the patient may have. All right? So, on sa mga parameters ginalantaw, color, consistency, and odor. All right? So, usually, ang color yun ang evident because any color na outside of brown, na normal, muni siya, um, considered na abnormal, okay, or possible na kay nakaun, alright? So, ang color is again light brown to dark brown, and this is due to the pigments, stercobilin, urobilin, and mesobilin. Because again, di ba, remember, ato ang, hagikan siya sa conjugated bilirubin, di ba? Sa ato ang chemical exam, discussion sa bilirubin metabolism, ang urobilinogen, uh, ang, ang, ang conjugated bilirubin will be expressed into the intestine, okay? And it will be digested or metabolized by the bacteria to produce urobilinogen. And urobilinogen, furthermore, i, i, i metabolize pag sa bacteria becomes stercobilin and the different pigments which give your feces the normal color light brown to dark brown. Nako, prepare sa oral revalida dear sa baka itanong ang bilirubin metabolism. Very potent question na siya. As in, ako, ipangutanan ako na. Alright? Na-explain ninyo. Okay? Starting from RBCs until dito sa ano, urobilinogen. Okay? Alright, sige. Now, what are the different colors? Abnormal, of course. Yellow, uh, it could be pathologic or non-pathologic, yes. So non-pathologic usually coming from the food that we eat or mga drugs na itong ingest And for pathologic, of course, it can indicate a disease process. So for yellow, um, what are the non-pathologic causes? Ingestion of milk, mga cornmeal, starchy food, or santonin, usually sa mga children no, or mga babies. Um, for pathologic, you have amelorrhea, increased ang starch, and unchanged bilirubin. For green, of course, you have spinach, mga green vegetables, or food coloring, no? nakatry ko um uh, ako mom ako actually ako yawan ko kay nangaon mi sa chef tubes <laughs> i didn't know na mention na nako ang ang ano but anyway ni kaon itong ube cake nila ya yeah, ang ang cake mo sa chef tubes ba kay very kanang boost wok gani like very ano gid siya compact gana so uh, naglain yang tiyan kay medyo na siya problem sa yang tiyan so then paglantaw pag 
kalibang niya nangutana kung say color sa imuhang stool okay, of course med text mga utana gita kay ano para makabalot sa possible na mga sakit so ana siya green ako na ha huh? ano green <laughs> no yuan ko <laughs> so therefore it's pa- it's probably due to the food coloring nagi add okay so nayo mga food coloring that can make your stool color green okay so that's non pathologic all right for pathologic of course unchanged liver dean so possible na na eye problem sa liver okay now for black tarry of course for non pathologic Uh, ingestion of mga bisbuth, charcoal, all right? Uh, ayor na mga tambal, also mga blackberries and huckleberries. But for the pathologic, very important beers is, again, uh, possible upper GI bleeding. Ano ganin siyang mo black? It's because of the breakdown, no? Uh, or the hemolysis of blood, of hemoglobin into hematin. Okay, so that gives the the, the stool black tarry color. So, marasag ka ng, marasag, um, ang tarry kay marasag tar, kanang marasag, marasag, ang tarry kay marasag ka ng oil, ay, kung marasag ka ng grease, gani, na, na, or tar, kanang marasag, how do I describe tar? Marasag gasolina, adi siya gasolina, pero, basta marasag thick na viscous, tapos black, black, okay? And if wala kay history of eating mga blackberries or mga bismuth charcoal, then possibly, Uh, it's upper GIT bleeding. All right. Now, red, of course, if you eat beets and tomatoes, and of course, possible lower GIT bleeding. Basta fresh blood, gani kay na pa sa lower GIT, so fresh pang blood, wala pa siya na degrade fully, all right, into hematin. So therefore, red good ang color. Or it could be indicative of hemorrhoids and of course, carcinoma. All right. Now, clay, tan, putty, acolic stools, of course, uh, non-pathologic ingestion of barium, and for pathologic, you have the absence of bile, obstructive jaundice. Alam nyo na yan. Because again, obstruct ni muhang bile duct, dili maabot ang conjugated bilirubin sa imuhang intestine. So therefore, walay i-convert ang bacteria to urobilirugin. So walay pigments na ma-produce for the normal color of stool. So it's acolic, acolic, A-C-H, O-L-I-C, acolic stools, alright, or pale stools, ayan, acolic stools, alright, acolic, take note of that, acolic stools, okay, alright, acolic uh, stools, so nakuyawan ko dears, natin time, na murag, nalibang ko, and then inani akong ang color, like acolic, na murag siya gray, no, oh my god, is this bile duct obstruction, so diba, inani ako, na murag, as metrics, makabalun mo ka, so like, Every time malibang jug ko, I, I pasintawi sa mga kumakain, no? <laughs> Pero every time na mag-defecate ko or mag-call ko sa, call, uh, answer sa call sa nature, I usually check the color of the stool, of my stool, to determine lang kung okay pa ba ako ang insides or na nabay problem. Alright? So, uh, ganun. So, as med text, ato i-apply good in real life ato mga na-learn. Okay? Alright. Now, dark red or chocolate brown, of course, ingestion of mga coffee, cocoa, chocolate, and increased red meat diet. And it may also indicate Uh, bleeding. So that's for color. No, your color, it could indicate both pathologic or non-pathologic causes. Now for consistency, how it how is the texture? No, or how is it as a as a solid na material? So for normal consistency, of course, it's soft to formed. And for abnormal, it can vary from soft to watery to gaseous or fermentative. All right. So of course, here is the summary, no? how we describe the consistency. So it's more on examining the um the stool. So conform cha. Uh, akong hard, di siya ma-puncture sa applicator stick, gahi yun. For formed, it maintains shape, can be punctured. Semi-formed, bottom side, flattens, and soft, can be cut with an applicator stick. Kanang color green, muli siya mga normal na consistencies. Mushy, it can be reshaped. Ayun, pwede ni mo siyang i-mix-mix, <laughs> ganun. Loose, kaya it takes the shape of the container, so medyo paduno na siya watery. Diarrheic, it will flow slowly out of the container. Watery, muli siyang tubig. It will flow freely na yun siya. Okay? It will flow freely. All right. Now, for the abnormal consistent, uh, Bristol stool chart pa the ideas. Ayan. So, the appearance of the stools. No? So, you have type 1, mura siyang separate hard lumps like nuts. Okay? Type 2, kaya na siya lumpy appearance. Type 3, kay like a sausage but na cracks on the surface. Type 4, kay smooth and soft, niya, sausage or snake. Type 5, kay soft blobs with clear-cut edges. Mara siya ka na nor cubes. Ayan. Ay, sorry. Pasensya baka na, na ruin ang image na nor cubes. Niyo. Type 6, kay uh, mushy stool. And type 7, kay watery. So, asa man yung bias, I need years. <laughs> o, di ba? So, sa medtech ra nang mag, mag-story ito about mga tai. Yan nilang mga appearances. O, di ba? Ang sarap! Hindi niyan makikita sa nursing. Tsaka, tsaka lang. Hindi niyan makikita sa COPVA. Tsaka, tsaka lang. Tsaka lang. So, sa, kita yun na, no? Um, malingaw ta sa different appearances sa stool. All right? Okay. <laughs> Next, you have the different consistency. For soft watery, as you can see, of course, it's most likely diarrhea, GIT irritation. Rice water, again, kakinsin rice water, cholera. So, how do you remember RC? Kung kinsin letter C, rice, siya ang disease, letter C, cholera. For pea soup, 
is typhoid fever. Nako, I remember, very distinct characteristic press the buzzer na yun. Extremely hard, murag growth droppings, prolonged constant constipation, spastic colitis, and atony of the colon. Nawadan na o parang uh, tone imuhang colon. Okay? Ribbon-like or flattened stool, pipe stem, murag niwang kaya siya, indicates obstruction, all right? Syphilis or tumors and ulcers. Uh, mucoid, of course, amibiasis, the kang mucus, no? dysentery, inflammation of the colon. Small caliber uh, due to hemorrhoids, cancer, and ulcer. Large caliber is uh, among children with Hirschsprung's disease. So, na ay, murag, ang, ang Hirschsprung's kay murag medyo ni, ni, ni enlarge yung mga intestine. Gaseous fermentative, of course, uh, increased carbohydrate fermentation. So, increased ang ang, ang imuhang imuhang uh, gas formation. Okay? Alright. Now, for odor, of course, the norm normal odor, it's peculiarly offensive but not extremely foul. Like, matolerate, matolerate lang siya. Iso ko siya baho pero matolerate ra. Inana. Okay? Uh, substances conferring the odor, it's your butyric acid, indole, and scatol. <laughs> so, marami akong kakilala niyan mga scatol. Charo, tsaka lang. So, uh, remember sa inyong org chem, uh, diba, if mag-lab mo, butyric acid, yung smell chem or siya attached. No? That's why, um, dili siya kailangan i-open dahil yun dahil yun. <laughs> Dapat dito sa outside uh, outside the classroom para dili mo, mo ano ang smell. Because butyric acid smells like shit. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Sige. So that's for the odor. Now, abnormal odors, extremely foul. Amibic dysentery, cancer of the intestines, putrefaction, ang amate na yung tissue. So, medyo isog. Putrid, medyo putrid is necrosis, hemorrhage, malignancy, murag na yung imong smell. Kay murag, ang smell niya kay murag na yung patay, na putrid. Sour and rancid by Olivia Rodrigo. Char Hyperacidity, gas formation, and un unabsorbed fats. Because again, of the acids produced. So, medyo aslum iyahang smell. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So, that's for the abnormal odors. And here is the summary. Um, this is from your notes. So, ako nang dimension niya po. Uh, uh, emphasize lang, there's bulky, frothy, of course, pancreatic disorders. Because remember, your pancreas release enzymes, releases enzymes to digest fats. So, if na ay deficiency sa pancreas, wala ay enzymes na mo digest sa fats. So, therefore, there's increased number of fats in your stool. Alright? So, bulky, frothy. Um, Butter-like cystic fibrosis because of increase in mucus. Remember, cystic fibrosis is a uh, uh, is a disease in the secretion excretions, no, sa mga tubules, all right, uh, especially sa pancreas and sa lungs, all right. And of course, rice watery RC kung isa nila C cholera, what a pea soup typhoid. Okay, all right. For the last nang years, the first ay oh my god, tas madi kayo ni uh, fecal fats madi ay abi na katong fecal leukocytes. Okay, sige, tomorrow na lang ni. Alright, so that's the end muna for today, dears. So at least we have started with fecalysis, no? So atong, ako ang tang goal karon is mahuman yun na itong fecalysis. But because napasarap ang chika, sige na lang, alright? We'll do what we can do, alright? And we'll have to do what we can do, okay? Alright, sige. So any questions, dears, before we end? Ako sa Instagram recording.